deep one for the end zone. Malin is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! He got it! The memory is still fresh in the minds of present-day Boston College players as they hope for another miracle against Miami. For the Hurricanes, a season-long dream was realized last week in Tallahassee. Tonight, as the nation's top-ranked team, their claim of being number one will be put to a test. Welcome to Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, as tonight the top-ranked Hurricanes of Miami are in town to take on the Eagles of Boston College, who are closing out their season here at home. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin. Welcome once again to Saturday evening primetime football right here on ESPN. And we have gotten indeed fortunate, particularly Miami has as far as the weather. Late November in Boston, Massachusetts, it could be very cold. It's only going to be in the 40s tonight, and it's going to be dry. Mike Godfrey joins me on the telecast tonight. The Hurricanes fresh off the biggest win of the season, one of the biggest wins ever for them. How tough is it for them to get up for Boston College tonight, Mike? Ron, it will be tough for them to get up. Usually you play about three games a year where you're sky high. Then you have to come down. They played a very physical football game against Florida State. They're hurt. They've got three starters, probably won't play. The other starters are banged up. But they have a strong defense, and they have Stephen McGuire. And when you can run the football and you play good defense, you have a chance to win on the road. You have a chance anytime you play. And Miami has the big carrot at the end of the stick, the national championship. So I look for them to play and play hard. Well, for the Eagles of Boston College, as they close out this season, Mike, what do they bring to the table? And, and do they have a chance to win here the, tonight? Well, Boston College has played well the second half of the season. They don't match up well with Miami. They don't have the speed to match up. They have to get in a physical football game. On offense, they have to find a way to get the ball to their fine tight end, Mark Shimura. They have to hit him in the two deep zones in the middle and use a lot of option routes, get the football in his hands to be successful. Okay, the third man, as usual, on our telecast is Adrian Karsten. Right now, the home folks are whooping it up. Let's go down to him and get this update. Adrian. Well, Ron, tonight, Boston College completes the second toughest schedule in college football. But consider this. They played their best football of the year against two top ten teams. They're tired of coming close. What they want to do tonight is to upset the team ranked number one in the nation. The thing that helped us the most, Adrian, was down at Penn State in the fourth quarter. See, we had played some three quarters. We played three quarters against Michigan, and uh, really it was a battle uh, right at that point. But we played four quarters at Penn State, and I think our kids then began to believe. Coach Coughlin told me if his Eagles have kept it close going into the fourth quarter, they will pull the upset of the decade. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Miami versus Boston College, is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beer, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. And by Thrifty Car Rental, because it's your money, call 1-800-FOR-CARS or your travel consultant. Alumni Stadium at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, and many people are standing right now as we are about set to kick this one off. You know, when you're a heavy underdog in a game like this, Mike, uh, you might look for anything. I mean, BC for reverses on kickoffs or whatever, right? But you really have to. You have to take every chance, every opportunity you can to make something happen. This is three yards deep, and Dukes is going to return it. No chance for any tricks right here, and he's going to be stopped at the 14-yard line. Let's take a look at the Energizer starting lineups tonight for Boston College. A red-headed Irishman, a quarterback, why not? He's out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And Glenn Foley, only a sophomore, has been playing very well. Mark Chimera, one of the premier tight ends in the country. Watch for number 89 a lot tonight. He'll be playing on Sundays next year. And Dan Britton, certainly the best and the most consistent of the offensive linemen for Boston College. And, of course, they have an extremely big task tonight taking on a front seven for Miami that is just about as good as they come. That's number 85. That is Durham. Russell Durham, who was injured on the special teams. And you can see that they're asking either for help or for a stretcher to get him off the field. Ron, with 
Boston College starting out on offense. What Tom Coughlin has brought to this ball club is the giant, the New York Giant philosophy. You win with the run, possess the ball, keep it a long time, and then set up your play action. And that's what he's going to have to do tonight to have any kind of chance in this game. Foley, the quarterback for the Boston College football team. As we said, he's only a sophomore. Good size. You see his numbers. He will go over 2,000 yards tonight. 19 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Obviously, he would like to cut down that total right there. But uh, in the last six ball games, he has been playing extremely well. Has the offense as a whole. One of the reasons is they finally got the running game. Well, instead of throwing, throwing the ball 35 times a game like they were in the early four games, now they're throwing it about 20 times. But you're right, the running game sets up the play-action passing game. Miami was offsides in the kickoff, so uh, as they continue to attend to Durham on the field, the Hurricanes will be penalized five yards, and they'll do it all over again. Tom Coughlin there, and as Mike mentioned, this time last year he was coaching for the New York Giants and was actually did not even know that uh, they were headed for a world championship. He had an idea that they were a very good football team. He has a lot of New York memorabilia in his office. And, of course, on the other side of the field, he's in his third year as the head coach at Miami. His first year, he went 11-1, and won, won a national championship. Last year was 10-2, and two, was Dennis Erickson, and third in the nation. His team arrived in here late yesterday afternoon. They wanted to work out uh, here at the field at Boston College, but because it, the weather yesterday was just miserable, and frankly, Boston College wishes that the game could have been played yesterday because it was foggy, it was very cold, it was a penetrating, damp cold. Well, tonight is far more comfortable. I, I think you need every edge against a team like Miami. Well, you really do. And uh, yesterday, Miami it caught in traffic in Boston, came out here, and I think they were upset a little bit that they didn't get the opportunity to work out, but they did walk a little bit on the field just to give their players an idea where they're going to be at tonight. You know, since 1960, Miami has played 29 road games when the game temperature was 54 degrees or lower, and it shows a record of 15 and 14 in those games, which kind of backs up that point. And tonight, as they now are bringing a stretcher out on the field, that's uh, Mark Chabura you're looking at, number 89. Uh, in this one tonight, the temperature is supposed to settle in like the upper 40s, no moisture, and although some folks who reside down in Miami might say that's a little bit cool, believe me, we could have far, far worse in the Northeast this time of year. Ron, Miami's 34 of 38 on the road, so in, in uh, the last 38 games. So they played so well at home in the Orange Bowl, that, but they play extremely well on the road also. Russell Durham is a reserve linebacker. The injury to his leg, and that's the reason for the hold up here, and they're taking the youngster off the field. To so all the anticipation, the hard work, and one play. And he is getting a nice round of applause from the Boston College faithful. So Miami will kick it over again. Huerta will elaborate on him tonight. I, I think he's the best in the country, Mike, and if not the best, uh, some scouts even say that he will be drafted rather than picked up as a free agent. A walk-on at Miami was talked into coming to Miami by Gary Stevens, who's now the quarterback coach of the Miami Dolphins. Boston College takes it straight away. They will. It's good. Got a big opening. Wow. He gets pounded with a head-high tackle, but uh, at least they're going to have a lot better field position following a 25-yard return. Kevin Patrick, one of the men to keep an eye on in a very talented front four. Sophomore, he's making a name for himself. The linebacker is very active, very good. Barrow is playing with an injured ankle, but we'll still call his name a lot tonight. And the veteran in the secondary, watch for number eight, Curly Brown. Got a good one out of Merritt Island, Florida. A 
if this goes against Miami, you've had two signs right off the bat. Being a little Dead lax. ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, first down. Against Boston College, but Miami started the game offsides on the kickoff. Now, now Boston College makes a mistake. The right side of your screen, watch the tackle. Just raise up the left offensive tackle, Dan Britton. Well, with Patrick, the young man we were talking about that he is trying to, to block against. Buddy Ward is our referee. Buddy making the call just a moment ago. Campbell gets the handoff. He'll take it for about four, up around the 25. And Anthony Hamlet, who's a senior out of Delray Beach, is there to make the stop. What they have to establish early is Mark Chimura, the tight end. They have to find a way to get him the football. Even though they're backed up against a good Miami, solid Miami defense, they have to find a way to get the ball to their outstanding tight end. Foley, first pass of the night, good protection, and that's Chimura. And it is intercepted by Barrow. Barrow took it away from him at the 30-yard line. Michael Barrow out of Homestead, Florida, linebacker, the junior linebacker, played the tight end, just as we've talked about Mark Chimura, have to get the ball to him. Watch the inside release, but watch how Michael Barrow hooks up with him, even holds him a little bit, but is in great shape and just wrestles the ball away from Mark Chimura for the interception. The ball wasn't thrown that bad. See how they're trying to keep him from coming off the line of scrimmage. Ball's thrown a little bit to his left, just picked off by Michael Barrow for a nice interception. Even McGuire, blockers in front and a deep flag coming from down in the secondary as he will take it inside the 25 to the 24. And let's meet the starters on offense for Miami tonight as the Hurricanes are flagged for holding. Gino Toretta out of Pinole, California, very consistent performer this year. The leading receiver for the Hurricanes, watch for number 36, Lamar Thomas tonight. And a very fine Holy. offensive line. Ten yards. Cersei, number 73, and Leon is another youngster off this Miami football team that you'll see playing on Sundays. The scouts really, really like him. Excellent feet. Pulls very well on the counter play. Boston College has opened up with a nickel defense, so Miami should go to the running game. Go deep! Take it deep! Go on. McGuire again, huge opening, pass five, pass ten, counted off at 15, he's down to the 21-yard line. Well, Boston College has opened the first two plays with a four-man front, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Here you see number 30, Stephen McGuire. If that's going to be the case where they're going to run the nickel defense against Miami, look for Stephen McGuire to be the bulk of the offense tonight and run the football against the six-man front. On a second down and short, two tight ends, Moore and Bell in the ball game for the Hurricanes. McGuire, oh, he just puts the head down and says, who can I run over? Brennan is the first man that he hit. Let's meet those starters on defense for Boston College tonight. Mike Marinero, very good player, very good name. He is a, a cousin to Ed. And Tom McManus, far and away the leading tackler on this football team. You'll, you'll hear his name time and time again tonight. And Michael Reed in the secondary. He's the best cover guy, number 17, out of Wilmington, Delaware. Great play fake. It's Coleman to tight end. Coleman Bell. And he will be bumped out of bounds inside the 10 at around the 9. That's McManus who was there to do the damage. Miami's open with a running game. Now you fake the run to Stephen McGuire. Come out the backside. Find Coleman Bell, the tight end who blocked and then just released in the flat. But Ron, what Boston College is saying on defense is, hey, we're going to try to stop the passing game and just hope that they're not patient enough to run the football. But I think they're going to find Miami patient and run the football on Stephen McGuire to have a big, big night. You see the guards out front. That's Searcy. McGuire going to be stopped at about the four. Leon couldn't find anybody to block. Well, he does run well for a big person. <laughs> What the pro scouts like about Leon Searcy, they play him on the quick side, watch him pull, watch the offensive line, here's the block down on the play side. 
but here comes Cersei, number 73, leading Stephen McGuire. He just cuts it up inside, takes it down to about the three-yard line. Cersei weighs 285 pounds, and you can see his man fell down. He lost his footing. We, it probably is maybe slipperier than what we realized down on the field. You can see a little sheen on the surface from all the rain yesterday. First and goal, Hurricanes. First and goal at the three-yard line. Well, a mistake by Boston College. At the 30-yard line, the interception. As Barrow picked it off, and that's the one thing that the BC coaches said they couldn't do against this football team. McGuire gets cracked hard by McManus. 50 threes out of Edgewater, Florida. 6'2", 231 pounds, and he stopped it for about a half yard. Well, he stepped right up inside. They went to a goal line defense. Tom McManus, number 53, will step up and meet Stephen McGuire. Remember, when you're in one back offense, there isn't a lead blocker, so a lot of times the linebacker will filter through. Now, they'll either give the ball to McGuire or a play-action pass by Gino Toretta. Coleman Bell. They like that counter action down on the goal line. A play action pass by Gino Toretta. Just a real quick fake to Stephen McGuire. He came out the left side. Coleman Bell, the tight end, came right, back against the goal line running. defense and back in the end zone for the touchdown. Carlos Huerta, 32 of 34, and extra points this year. And of course, holds the NCAA record for consecutive extra points until he missed earlier. Top of the snap, Huerta. <laughs> Put it on the ground, and he was going to uh, do a little Jim Thorpe action there, a little drop kick. Looked like Jim Thorpe or Lee Corso. He used to drop kick some kicker. Some... That's been the first snap for Sean Von Bieber. He's a walk-on. He's a fifth-year player, walk-on. He played at Northeast Oklahoma as a defensive tackle, but Rusty Medeiros usually does the snapping, but he's hurt, so Sean... Snapping in his first game. Never snapped on, not even in junior high, high school, college. That was his first snap. So let's take one more look at it as six to nothing is our score with the Hurricanes on top. And here's the counteraction that Mike was talking about. The play fake. And look at the back of the end zone. Coleman Bell all alone. And what does Toretta think? Well, he gets to look at it a little bit. And he says, I'll help you out. It is a touchdown. Let's take a break. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Miami versus Boston College, is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. And by Black & Decker, the source of powerful gift ideas. Miami prepares to kick this one off on top six to nothing. The touchdown pass to Coleman Bell in the back of the end zone. going to come down to Duke at the three. I'll tell you what, that is two tackles in a row. Great job on the uh, Miami special teams as a flag has come down by Malcolm Pearson, number 38. Boy. Van Bieber is... Loosening up on the sidelines with the snap. Face mask on the kicking team, five yards, first down. But let's take another look at it. It's uh, it's not his fault. Well, I, I think it was a good snap right to the tight end, Joe Moore. He just drops the football. And then an alert, Carlos Huerta, he's trying to drop kick it. <laughs> Miller in motion. Whistles and... to be procedure against Boston College. So the Eagles have got to calm down here. They're down six to nothing. They, this is the second time that they have jumped on a first down play and they have thrown an interception. And as you look at Coach Coughlin, one of the things he talked about yesterday, he said it goes without saying, 
we've got to play 110 percent we cannot make mistakes against a team like Miami well it's a coaching job in transition to transition here they played well at the end of the season but they're still a young football team by Dukes and Darrell Williams finally is there to make the stop. Watch Mike Jovanovich, number 72, lead the blocking for Chucky Dukes. Now, for them, for Boston College to have any type of success, they have to be able to run the football. Miami has three defensive linemen playing in different positions tonight. And you know, the formations will bother them a little bit lining up. They show them so many formations. Let me correct what I said. I forgot the five-yard penalty. That's going to be a 17-yard gain. For far and away, the longest run from scrimmage. Campbell this time, and Darnell will have maybe one out to the 39-yard line. When I think of Miami and haven't played against them, you go way back to when Howard Snellenberg started this role of Miami. They play such great defense, but they give the offense such great field position. And that's, that, that's been their key. There's Bob Karmelowitz, the defensive line coach. He has so many good defensive linemen and just has them stacked behind each other. Two tight ends this time for BC. Foley, second pass of the night as the flag comes down. That's going to be holding, it looks like, as his thrown complete to Campbell. And boy, BC coming up with more errors than they can say grace over right now. And let's go to Adrian and get a first update from him. Adrian. Well, Ron, unfortunately, four seconds, tick of the clock, is all Russell Durham, the backup outside linebacker, is going to get tonight. Probable broken left leg, paramedics told me. He's off and will not return to action tonight. BC cannot afford that. Okay, Adrian, thank you very much. Ron, on that last play, Miami went to a five-man front. Now, they're a 4-3 defensive team, but they went to the fifth man and they brought their linebacker Darren Smith number 45 and lined him up on the tight end because Boston College plays with two and three tight ends you have to stretch and they have to stretch that defense I'll tell you who's in the ball game right now that surprises me Jesse Armstead number one we didn't think we'd see him tonight he was injured throw it out of the backfield and Armstead fell down Miller will take it to the 39 yard line so Boston College is back very close to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be third down. Looks to me like Miami's having a difficult time adjusting to all the formations. Here, Glenn Foley drops back. He's just going to pick the receiver. Darnell Campbell in the flat, makes a good reception. Jesse Armstead fell down, and then he picks up good yardage. Damon Bethel comes into the ball game, number 46. He's a sophomore out of Philadelphia, 6'5", 248. Take it to the 34. 27 yards in the pass play. And a blown coverage for sure in the Miami secondary. The problem is, again, the concentration you have after the week of Florida State. But all these formations, they show you a different formation on every play. Charles Farms, number two, made the tackle. But Miami's having a hard time adjusting to these formations. Second possession of the night by B.C. They threw an interception on the last one, so this is their deepest penetration of the night. Chucky Dukes, and all of a sudden, just what Miami didn't want, this uh, home crowd is really getting into the ball game. All of a sudden, you get a rhythm going, and you start to run the football again. That's, to me, the key. If they can have some success running the football, sets those pass plays up, sets those play-action passes up. Chucky Dukes, number 33, a 5'9", 185-pound junior. 84 rushes, 550 yards this year. You see that good average of 6.5 yards per try. This is Campbell. Has 5, has 10, got it off at 13. Good heavens. Armstead and Williams finally corralling. When you run a 4-3 defense and you take and you gap control and you see all the tight ends now, here's a trap play up inside. Michael Barrow, number 56, who's responsible for the trap and the defensive lineman closing. Both get blocked for good yardage for Darnell Campbell. 
Remember, keep an eye on number 89, Shamira. He is their favorite receiver, and particularly down here, although Miami is bumping him at the line of scrimmage on every play. This time, Dukes is going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. That's Jesse Armstead, number one, who grabbed him first. Then 46, Damon Bethel. Down here now, if you're Boston College, you want to try to get, even though Miami plays so much zone defense, Tom Coughlin wants some type of pick play down here where he gets a flood to his three receivers, preferably to the left side. This is the ninth play of the drive. Watch Mark Jamura in the flat. Foley will take it to the five. Armstead got a fan on him. This is a confused Miami defense right now. Now they're going to need to get them on the sideline when this series is over and put that board over there and start putting some formations there to try to get them to adjust a little bit better to what they're seeing from the Boston College offense. This you is see three tight ends to one side on this play, Ron. Sonny Lubbock told us yesterday that he's terribly concerned about what we're going to see with formation. Caesar will make the hit. But Darnell Campbell takes it very close. I think he's going to have the first down for Boston College. This has been a good drive for Boston College, an impressive drive. I, I'll check with Big E here, but this is the uh, 12th play of this drive, isn't it? The 11th play of the drive coming up. Tom Coughlin strips his first 35 plays. He has plays that he wants in first and 10 situations, and then all the other situations, second and short, third and short, second and medium, third and medium, and then long yardage situations. Well, look at this crowd. They're going crazy. It is a first and goal for the Eagles. Number 64 comes out over the football. Shamira with a touchdown. with good defense, but Glenn Foley with the play-action fake. Kevin Patrick, number 86, was after him. He just threw the ball up. Mark Chimero was so wide open. They lost him. He blocked, and then he shot to the corner. And no one covered Mark Chimero. Sean Wright, who's 24-27 in extra point attempts, tries to put B.C. on top. High pass, but he gets it. And let's take one more look as we go to commercial. Mark Chimiro with the touchdown pass tonight. It is his sixth of the season. And watch the great job of poise by Foley. He sees the blitz coming, still gets it away. you got to be impressed with the catch and also with the sophomore, Glenn Foley. And the head coach, what does he think? Well, on the sideline, he says, we thought it would work against the blitz. Even it does. BC leads. We'll take a break. Now this is the offense of uh, Boston College huddling on the near side. And on the far side of the field, Mike, just what you were talking about. Well, they just broke it up. But the defense went straight to the coordinator, and, and they started doing a lot of chalkboard action there. They're having problems with the three tight ends because it stretches the defense. You have more gaps to defend, and that's what they have to come up with an answer to. Boston College has just scored the first touchdown this year in the first quarter against Miami. Here comes the pooch kick. He's going to try to keep it away from William. He's going to get it anyway at the 18-yard line. Ball is loose. Miami recovers. Wow. At the 24-yard line. Martin Patton was Johnny on the spot, or BC was going to really have some momentum. Now let's look at the touchdown that Boston College scored. You're going to see the tight end. Watch him block. There's man coverage on him. 
Watch him show block. Now the other receiver picks a little bit for him. He's wide open now. He just has to make the catch. Stretches out, brings in the touchdown grab. I told you he's impressive, and the scouts say that they, he could be a first round pick by somebody, depending on who's looking for tight ends. Boy, he's but for 235 pound guy, that's that's good hands. Ball, ball start on the offense. All the evidence of a team being flat. Make mental errors, penalties, fumble the football, not concentrating on defense, and you have to figure it's going to happen. But Dennis Erickson knows the job he and his coaching staff have to do on the sideline. Now they have to wake this football team up, which they will accomplish as a staff. Mike, I'll tell you, Spencer has just gone out of the ball game, and number five, Williams, has come in. And see, they put Williams out to the left with those other two wide receivers. There is a lot of speed out there in that open side of the field. Carrata will be pushed out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Kamara, Joe Kamara, he's a redshirt freshman, is out there to push him out of bounds. Boston College on defense will play a 4-2 alignment, and then sometimes they'll slide to the Chicago Bear look, the 46 defense. They'll take the linebacker, Stephen Boyd, number 50, and take him up on the line of scrimmage. But I still feel like they're going to have a tough time stopping Miami's running game. McGuire. Set down hard at the 40, but not before he picks up the first down. And Eric Shorter is there to make the stop, but it's a gain of 13. Look, you're Steve Zabo, the defensive coordinator. You're saying this is the best of all worlds. At least we've got a shot of slowing them down and hope that they won't have patience. But Miami Stephen McGuire is off on a record-setting night the way he's starting this game. Stephen McGuire, a junior from Brooklyn, New York, 5'11", 215. Dead ball, illegal snap on the offense. Five yards, first down. Adrian Karsten, let's go back to you down on the sideline. What's happening? Well, Ryan just listened into a conference with defensive line. The Hurricanes were not beaten so much physically in that last scoring drive by the Eagles as they were psychologically. The whole point is they're getting caught flat-footed. They're seeing movements and pulling by the guards up front that they did not practice against this week. Ben Foley told us yesterday the whole key is to beat them psychologically. They're going to throw the book at them. Trick plays, different formations in every single drive. Something else to keep in mind. Miami has not lost to an unranked team in 49 games. Well, Gino Toretta picked out uh, an imaginary receiver in, in the middle of the field and probably was smart in doing it that way. Well, when you motion the back out, Boston College looks like it will blitz them. Every time they go to an empty set, which is no one in the backfield other than the quarterback, they will send Tom McManus, linebacker number 53. That was Tommy you were just looking at. He makes the defensive signal call. Second down on the line to make is midfield. Coretta has it complete to Coleman Bell, and the tight end is going to be stopped at the 45, and now third down and five for the Hurricanes. Well, you have one team here that's totally fired up, got the home crowd concentrating. You got another team that's the number one team in the country coming off the biggest win they've had all year. And uh, the coaching staff on the sidelines, you see them over on the sideline just trying to get their attention. And Boston College, I think, have, has got their attention with that first drive. I think so. <laughs> Coleman Bell, three receptions, 17 yards, and a touchdown tonight. You see McManus coming right up the middle. Quick pass is caught, and that's going to be enough for the first down. I believe Lamar Thomas, wasn't it? Horace Copeland, I beg your pardon. Eighty-eight. Horace, a junior out of Orlando. Horace, this is what we talked about when they when they go to no backs in the backfield. Boston College now twice has blitzed Miami. Now the coaches up in the press box see those adjustments. Now they start to pick away a little bit on what they're showing them defensively. Martin Patton has come to the ball game at the running back number thirty-two. Motion out to the sideline. Coretta down to 
the 41, Dan Kerr. Number 91, he's a sophomore from Wilton, Connecticut, will make the tackle. Boston College wants to make Miami work. No easy scores, no quick scores through the air. Hope that they make some mistakes, hope they fumble the ball, get some penalties, and just not patient enough to take the football length of the field. But this Miami team is a patient offensive team. McGuire turns the corner and gets down to the 32-yard line. And I'll tell you, BC was within a half a step of knocking that one down for a loss. They checked off, but BC went to their uh, 46 defense. Had a little penetration. Stephen McGuire hurt on the sideline on that play. Watch the penetration because of the line twist that Boston College is able to get people up into the backfield. But you see the speed of Stephen McGuire. He's able to get outside. Charlie Brennan, number 28, makes the tackle. McGuire is shaken up. He has six carries for 49 yards. And the training staff has come all the way across the field to look at him. So we'll take a break. 420 left in this opening quarter. Boston College 7, Miami 6. That's a live picture of uh, McGuire. And we're very happy to see that he was able to walk across the field. This is how it happened. Mike, watch the headgear on his left knee just as the leg is planted. You see his knee, his leg stiffen when the helmet yep. hit his knee. But he did walk across the field, and they're going to check it over now. Patton in the ball game. Martin Patton, a sophomore out of Missouri City, Texas. You see BC still moving around. Toretta. Coleman Bell, the tight end, weaving his way inside the 15 down to the 14. Stephen Boyd finally made the stop on him. The way Boston College feels like they can help stop the run is by moving their defensive linemen around to confuse the offensive line of Miami. Gino Toretta, the way he combats that is just go up the line of scrimmage and quick count and have the ball snap before they start the movement. Try to keep them from moving. Five of six for 42 yards passing. As Patton tries to cut a little too quick, loses his footing. He will have about one in the play. Seven to six, our score, if you just joined us. 340 left to play, opening quarter. And the seven is Boston College, the six is Miami. And Miami got on the board very easily and very quickly after an interception by Barrow at the 30-yard line. And the pass that was intended for Chimura. Toretta sings it. Kevin Williams had it go right through his hands. Ooh, should have had that one. A nice throw by Gino Toretta. He had a lot, of, a lot on that football. What Toretta looks like that he's having available to him against the Boston College defense is the tight end, number 17, Coleman Bell. Especially in this area, he should be a receiver that he looks to go to. The 11th play of the drive for Miami. Third down, the line to make is the five. Blitz from the outside, and now here comes a flag. We may have offensive holding as well. Boy, Toretta got decked. And that linebacker sees that backfield empty. He's blitzing every time. Huerta comes trotting on the field, expecting the Boston College to decline the penalty because it is fourth. And it is declined. Huerta is 14 of 18 in field goal attempts. And this one is going to come from around 32 yards away. Ron, the other thing that's confusing Miami a little bit is the twisting of the defensive linemen in passing situations. Not only are they blitzing when they have no backs in the back, but they're twisting also. A 31-yard attempt as he'll put it down at the 21. <laughs> It 
illegal procedure against Miami. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Now they're going to help McGuire off. He is uh, going through the end zone and heading to the Miami locker room. We'll try to get Adrian to get us a further update on him. But our situation, five-yard penalty, pushes it back to the 19-yard line, and now this will be a 36-yard attempt. Huerta tries to put the Hurricanes back on top. He got it. I'll tell you what, they had, con they had connection problems again. Moore had problems handling the snap. And where to maintain his concentration is still knocked it through. Hey, you watch more. You're going to see Joe Moore get the ball, try to get it, spin it. But Carlos Huerta really adjusted to the snap in the time of getting the ball set with a new snapper. <laughs> Can't get closer than that. Hit the bar. Hit the upright and go through. It's good. Let's go down to Adrian Carston for an update. Adrian. Well, Ron, I'm following Stephen McGuire into the Miami locker room. Medical staff tells me he will not play anymore tonight. Strained ligaments to his left knee. Left knee has already had reconstructed surgery on. Boy, quite a blow. Van Bieber on the sideline who is handling the snaps tonight, and Mike gave you the story on him just a few moments ago. Join us Thursday night for the final course in your Thanksgiving football menu as Mike and I travel down to College Station, Texas, and Texas A&M for bragging rights in the Lone Star State, 7.30 Eastern Time. This coming Thursday, Mr. Duke. And I'll tell you, this is where the Miami team speed you, can't, you think that you work on special teams, but it's hard to duplicate and practice what you see against them, Mike. And here's a good, good example of it. That's a good point, Ron, because when you play them and you try to have your scout team uh, show their kicking game, their offense and defense, it just can't show you the speed that you're going to see in the ball game. But where Boston College had success on the previous kickoff returns when they kept it into the short side, not try to stretch it to the wide side because of the speed of Miami. To Murphy throws it to Miro, the tight end at the 30-yard line. That'll be enough for the BC first down. He just answered my question. I was going to wonder, since he had the interception, if they would try to throw this deep. You have to try to throw to him. And when you play against a team with two deep, now they move him out so that they move the linebacker out. He's just going to hook right behind the linebackers who take the fake that he that they gave to the running back on the draw, and he's open for the catch. Darren Smith, number 45, makes the tackle. Yeah, Smith is there to jam him almost every time when he comes off the line of scrimmage. Complete at the 37-yard line. 82 Pete Mitchell. He, too, is a tight end. And the book on him is excellent hands as well. Well, he's only 6'2", 210 pounds, but they use their tight ends and, and they bring him in motion and they really stretch your defense. See the high stretch of his arms bringing the ball in for a fine catch. Pete Mitchell from the state of Michigan. timeout called by Boston College and Miami was fortunate that they called the timeout because the man who moved at the line of scrimmage is a tight end he could reset so let's take a break 208 left in the opening quarter Hurricanes 9 Boston College 7 
just has great hands. He's 6'6", 231. He's a vertical football player. What I mean by that is he's a premier around the country of being able to stretch defenses up the field vertically. 2015 receiving yards, third on BC's all-time list. And they've had some great receivers here at Boston College. So Shaughnessy was in the ball game just a moment ago, as well as Foley, both being quarterbacks. We had seen Boston College run a trick play with that formation earlier this week in practice. Passing Foley is five of six for 63 yards. Duke. And Dukes is hit at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a third down and short. Armstead, number one, along with Eric Miller, the first two men to get there. Almost did not make connections, and they're not going to have the first down. Boy, that could have been a turnover as Eric Miller was right there in the hold. But for some reason, Foley and Campbell, Mike, was he running the, the wrong hole or what? No, I don't. He was able to get outside because Eric Miller uh, just knifed inside, beat the block of the offensive tackle, and made the tackle in the backfield. First punt of the night for Boston College. They will try to keep the ball away from Kevin Williams by kicking it far to the right side. Kushner kicks it away. Forty-two yards and nothing on the return. We'll be sure to catch all the action on Sundays on ESPN. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann for the most comprehensive preview show on television, NFL Game Day at noon tomorrow. And then see the best recap in television on NFL Primetime, 7 o'clock only on ESPN. And then be sure to be with Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann tomorrow night for an NFC West clash between the division-leading New Orleans Saints and the always colorful Atlanta Falcons. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Zings it over the middle, looking for Copeland. It was overthrown as Copeland was watching the ball and also was watching the safety who was coming right at his midsection. Good coverage. Charlie Brennan, number 28, was right there to, to make that play and to be around where Horace Copeland was making the cut. Gino Dreda again with a good hard throw just off the mark a little bit. <laughs> Great protection, but he misses the mark looking for Coleman Bell. And now it's going to be a third down and 10 for the Miami Hurricane. Well, this is what Boston College had hoped to accomplish. Steve Zabel, the defensive coordinator, Randy Etzel, the defensive secondary coach, playing with five DBs, wanted Miami to force the throw. And uh, two downs where they threw the ball in first and second down, playing with only a six-man front against the run. Five of 10 for 42 yards for Toretta, but he has missed his last four. complete at the 40-yard line. Lamar Thomas was able to hold on, and he was being sandwiched. He got hit pretty good. Same route. They just tried to throw a little bit ago to Horace Copeland two plays before. You're going to see Lamar Thomas. See the linebackers inside as a crossing route. Now Lamar Thomas is coming right behind the linebackers. It's a good cut, good underneath uh, rolls by the backs to try to get the linebackers on him to open it up for Lamar Thomas. So big third down conversion for the Hurricanes as Patton Goes on the running play. Check it, Larry Jones, 23, freshman out of Gainesville. And that will be the last play of the first quarter, so let's take a break. The Miami Hurricanes at the end of the first 15 minutes, leading the Boston College Eagles by a score of 9-7. to seven.
nine to seven our scores we head to the second quarter Mark Jamira resting on the sideline to find tight end for the BC Eagles. Larry Jones gets whacked hard at the line of scrimmage and he's going to have maybe one. McManus and Boyd, the two inside backers, are the ones who collapse on him. Ron, up until that play, Miami's averaging 7.2 yards per rush, so they're having success running the football. But you know something, Mike, what I'm anxious to see, and I know they got quality backs behind McGuire, but that was with McGuire in the ballgame. I want to see if that 7.2 will hold up in this quarter with McGuire gone for the rest of the game. Reverse. McManus again. Tough to reverse against the 46 defense when you're blitzing, and Tom McManus, number 53, was on a blitz. The 40, 46 defense, they shifted into it again just after the quarterback started making his calls. Watch number 53 blitz through, and he just caught him right. Caught Kevin Williams coming around on the reverse. Very difficult to run a reverse in that situation. First punt for the Miami Hurricanes tonight as they lose 10 yards in that last play. Michael Reed is the deep man, and he stays away from it. Beat up! Beat up! It's a big Miami roll and goes out of bounds at the 18-yard line. 38 yards on the kick. So with Hurricanes leading 9-7, the Army storyline in this one so far, Miami. McGuire out with an injury for the remainder of the game. Foley, 5 of 6, 64 yards and a touchdown. And a BC turnover is the way the Hurricanes were able to capitalize. They intercepted a pass. Barrow picked it off at the 30-yard line, and the Hurricanes took it in for the touch. Foley avoids the pressure, gets it away, and that's going to be incomplete. Jamira is the man that he wanted. Mike. <laughs> Miami does as good a job of putting on pressure as anybody. I'm really impressed with Foley and the way he's handled himself and the, the pressure and just the situation as a whole tonight. He avoided the sack that Darren Smith, number 45, just came off the corner. Repeat first down. So Boston College now picks up where they left off early in the ball game, and that is with making some errors. Campbell, number 32, comes into the backfield for the Eagles, replacing 33, Chucky Duke. He'll have a couple. Tim Brando, let's go to you for an update. All right, we're going to take you to Tinseltown, Ron, for the Crosstown Showdown, 17-7. Watch Reggie Perry under pressure to Larry Wallace. It's caught. He stumbles down at the one. Perry would sneak it in. It's 17-14 in the third, the Bruins. <laughs> well, that one, uh, long and storied rivalry that has got a few upsets, and SC hanging around tough in that one. A lot of big rivalries across the country today. Mitchell in motion is the pitch back comes to Duke. It, he gets whacked out of bounds at the 10. Herbert James is the man who got outside to make the initial contact. You can hear that microphone on the sideline, the official coming over saying he's out of bounds. Rushing yardage so far. Uh, Boston College holding their own. If they can continue to do that, then that opens the passing game for them. What they don't want to do is be in this situation, third and long. Third down in the line to make is the 28-yard line. Dukes over the middle. Armstead will hit him with a head-high tackle at the 20-yard line. And now some extended play down inside the five-yard line. There's a couple of the Miami players and let's see it's Eric Miller one of those involved with the Matt Metz I believe for Boston College anyway everything's all right this first punt tonight 
This was 40 yards for Cushman. Nine to seven, Hurricanes leading. Good driving spiral. Williams on the run. And the flag goes down. Williams is going to be tripped up now. A second and a third flag. We're going to have two clips on the play. One is a push from behind because the lead, the lead cover guy for Boston College was shoved in the back. That's the reason for the first flag. 54 yards in the punt, 24 on the, here's the shove right there. Just that little bitch, can't do it. Kevin Williams, so dangerous. There's the other clip by number 19. There's a timeout on the field, 11.50, left until halftime. Nine to seven, the nation's number one team having some problems here tonight at uh, Chestnut Hill in Massachusetts. Martin Patton is the lone setback. <laughs> Quick pass, Copeland, near sideline, ball's loose, that belongs to Boston College. Charlie Brenham. Gino Toretta seen that Boston College moved into a 6-1 look, checked off to the quick game to Horace Copeland. There's the fumble. Here you see Gino Tread again with the quick throw. Pick up the quick pass. Just drop the ball, let it get away from him. Charlie Brennan, number 28, covers the fumble. I'll tell you what, had they had a receiver out there, they were going for six points. Duke threw it anyway. There was no one close. They had a complete breakdown because the receiver didn't see, didn't run the route. You're going to see the pitch to number 33. Watch number 27 block, and there's no receiver out there. He just throws it to the corner. Caught. That's Mitchell, the number two tight end at the 21-yard line. And now Boston College is going to look at a third down situation. They had to have some kind of bust on that first play because it was open. Of course, <laughs> number 27 would have broke outside and went to the corner. I'm sure there would have been a defensive back on it. But, uh, they just had a bad first down play. But Dukes did what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to get one downfield, and he got it downfield. He's going to throw it no matter whether there's anybody there or not. <laughs> Aesthetically, it left a little to be desired. Third down, the line to make is the 15 of Miami. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Foley gets it away. That is going to be pass interference. Farm. Charlie Farm coming over the top. And the thing about it is, with the blitz, I'm not sure that Chimera could have caught the football anyway because it was low and away. Well, I think Charlie Farms was too far off of him, but I do think he put his hand on Mark Chimera. Watch the tight end now. Here you see the blitz coming. Now he adjusts his route. He runs a quick out. I don't know. That's don't pretty know. good coverage yeah. right there by Charles Farms. You're right. You're Very right. fair job of covering there. That's why he's upset. May get an arm on him. The left arm may be on his back. And that's what the call was for. But again, good defense, a good read by Mark Shamira. He saw the blitz coming. He shortened his route to the outside. Glenn Foley, who you talked about earlier, delivers the football. And that's Miami's seventh penalty. 
into our situation. 10 minutes, 53 seconds left to play until halftime. It is Boston College trailing 9-7. to seven. But driving. Campbell will take it to the 15-yard line. Michael Barrow, the junior out of Homestead. Michael is playing with an injured ankle tonight. In fact, that's the first time we've called his name on a tackle of the season. And as a middle linebacker in a 4-3 defense, you're going to be in on a lot of tackles. But it looks like Miami now is just settling down and playing a base defense, slanting their line a little bit, and just trying to get lined up against all the formations. Mitchell in motion. That's Dukes. Blockers in front, and he's going to be down to the 11-yard line. Boy, that thing was a convoy, and for the world, looked as though it was going to go further than that. What they do to you with the three tight ends is they line them up into the short side of the field, and they just overload you into the field, and then they pitch the ball to Chucky e. Dukes and just let him try to find a seam to cut up inside. Third down. Boston College needs about two and a half yards. Campbell, second effort, he is close. I don't think he got it though, Mike. Well, I don't know. No, not from where they're spotting the football now. BC's gonna have the first down, I believe. What they're doing with this formation is causing so many problems. You see Fran Foley, who makes the signals, he gives signals to Glenn Foley, who then knows the personnel coming in. When you run so many different people in there so that you don't get your players confused, you have names for like Tiger for three receivers or Bull for the three tight ends or whatever, just different code names so your players don't get confused. Dukes going to be hit with an ankle high tackle and stop for no gain. Now there was a flag down and I believe that that is going to be offside against Miami. Yep. So it's a free play for Boston College. As you look at Dennis Erickson, I know the frustration that he has right now because of all the mistakes. This is such a well-coached football team. Bob Carmelowitz sending in the signals for the defensive team such a well-coached football team. You don't, they don't make those mistakes. And again, the letdown they're having from the Florida State game, but he'll get their attention. So the penalty moves the, penalty moves the ball to the four-yard line. It will be first and goal from four yards away now. in motion. Campbell with the carry and he takes it down to the one. Eric Miller, 95, down at the bottom of the pile. I think a player that Miami misses, a leader, is Rusty Medeiros. Uh, even though he's on the trip, he hasn't, uh, he's injured. Uh, he's a player that plays with so much emotion and he's like the team leader of that defense. That now falls to Michael Barrell, Darren Smith, the linebackers. got the football at the 11-yard line. Dukes coughed it up. Nobody touched him. Big mistakes you can't make against this Miami defense. They had an unbalanced line into the short side of the field, and, and it looked to me like they had a pretty good play, but Chucky Dukes just drops the football. You're trying to put it away, Mike. Trying to put it away and just dropped it. Ryan McNeil, number 47, comes up with the football. So let's take a break. 8.23 left until halftime. Miami continues to lead by two. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Miami versus Boston College, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by Levi's, jeans for men. Well, as you look at the back of the head of McNeil of Miami, uh, the, the Miami players have got those skull tops on. 
but as we mentioned off the top of the telecast, you don't see any of those on the Boston side of the field because this is not really cold weather. Well, it's this, only like the upper 40s. This is the day they'd go to the beach. <laughs> for Miami. See if they'll just go downtown on this one. Serena, yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. Copeland is the guy that he wanted, but well overthrown. Well, let's go back to Tim Brando. Tommy Maddox hasn't overthrown too many, Ron Franklin. Take a look at here as Mari Toy is going to be on the receiving end of this pass against the Trojans. That's a touchdown. The extra point good. 24 to 14 now in L.A. Thanks, Tim. Nine to seven, our score. You can see just over eight minutes to play until halftime. Tommy Maddox, best young quarterback I've seen in the country this year. Backside pressure. And that one is first hop to Bell. And that was Stephen Boyd this time. Number 50, rather than McManus, it was coming hot after Toretta. Well, what they do is when they empty the backfield, they'll take Stephen Boyd on the outside, the outside linebacker. You're going to see him come from Gino Toretta's blind side. I don't believe he even sees him. He may feel him. Now I know he feels him. <laughs> they came from the side. They met at the quarterback. The two backers. McManus was there as well. 7 of 14 for Gino Toretta. 69 yards and one touchdown. Third down. You might think screen now. The way they're starting to blitz him. They need to make the 22-yard line. Toretta zings it and incomplete. Threw it behind Copeland. So Boston College stands to get decent field position. They do, Ron. And you know what? All week, Tom Coughlin and his coaches have been showing the film of Miami against Penn State, Miami against West Virginia, and how well they played both of those teams. And just saying, if we just hang in there and don't make any mistakes, that we can play with these guys. And he has his team believing it. Snyder's first kick tonight was 38 yards as you look into the face of Michael Reed, number 17. Driving spiral. Reed will be stopped at the 46-yard line. Malcolm Pearson downfield on the special team. That's the third tackle for him tonight on special teams. Yeah, let's go to Adrian Carson. Rod, you've got to ask yourself at this point, would Miami and Gino Toretta be throwing this much if McGuire was still in the game? He rushed for 49 yards before he went out with his injury. The rest of the team combined has 15. Now, last year, Boston College was 104th out of 106 total Division I teams in rushing. Right now, they lead the number one team in the nation in rushing in this game. Thanks, Adrian. Well, that's the point that, that Mike and I were making earlier, that, you know, with McGuire not there. Mitchell with a great catch. He's a redshirt freshman from Bloomfield, Minnesota. Well, Adrian is exactly right, and, uh, but I still think you'll run the football. They're giving you a defense that you can be successful running the football and with patience. In the last punt, the long snapper was Rusty Medeiros. He snapped the football, but he limped so bad on his ankle that he only went about five yards down the field. But they wanted him in to make the snap. Let me correct what I just said. Mitchell's from Bloomfield, Michigan, rather than Minnesota. Dukes, he will be hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down. Darren Smith, number 45, was the first man there. Now Miami's settling down a little bit. They've seen all these formations. Now, they are, now they've made their adjustments, and now they're going to play good, solid defensive football against these looks. There's Rusty McDerris, number 98, who just is such a valuable member of this football team. I really believe he's the leader. When I watch him play, he plays with such emotion. Flag has come down as Armstead will not pull him down at the 40-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 11 yards, but I think it's coming back. Yep, going to be holding against the Eagles. Six thirty-seven left until halftime. Holding on the offense. Ten yards. Repeat third down. That's six penalties already against Boston College for a total of sixty yards. Can't do it. Both teams have been penalized quite a bit here in the first half. Hurt drives. This offensive line has done a, a, a pretty good job against a, a hard-charging Miami team. 
fans are booing because the holding occurred so deep in the backfield. That's why they're taking it so far back. Wow. Did they lose some yards in this play? The new line of scrimmage is going to be the 26-yard line. They had just picked up a first down. So now the line to make is the 44-yard line of Miami. Double pass. Incomplete. Barrel and Darren Smith both. We're all over it, and let's check this flag right now. Disregard the flag. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. So they were going to call an illegal, uh, illegally downfield, but the pass was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. So that's the reason he picks it up. Bill Kushner kicking to Kevin Williams here. See the way his ankle trying to kick it away from Williams. Ball is touched down by a BC player, and I think it was long before it was going to stop rolling. Let's take a break. 6 11 left until the halftime. Miami by two. Triple header next Saturday, Mike. And Adrian and I will be in the Birmingham, Alabama for the matchup between the Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers. That means a whole lot to a whole lot of folks down there in that state. Leon Searcy came out of his stance early. And for the way he was set up, he was going to hook back to the inside. They were going to take it to his side All of the field. On the offense, repeat first down. Well, I think what they're complaining about is maybe that when Boston College is making their call to stem their linemen, the offensive linemen are hearing that call, and it's similar to the cadence, and that's why he jumped off sides. Good point. Tom McManus, the middle linebacker, one of the two middle backers, 53, comes up to smack him down, but it's a gain of almost five on the play. Miami's had success running the football. Here's one of the reasons, number 73, Leon Searcy. Look at that block. Think you'll get a pancake on that? Good push on the play. Boy, out of Orlando, Florida. David Jones is the man he was blocking on. Brings the pass out to Patton. Breaks it open. As a couple of men to beat, it's going to be finally stopped at the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 30. And the other thing that the BC coaches said coming into this one tonight, they could not give up the big play. I just talked a little bit ago about all the pressure and the blitzes that Miami's been getting. And here they set the screen up to Martin Patton. There's the block by number 54, the offensive lineman, Kelvin Harris, the center, comes out, makes the key block. Then Martin Patton's in the secondary, down in Boston College territory. Jaretta now 99 yards in the touchdown. He's 8 of 16 throwing. Patton, spread him out and look at this hole. He goes for 10 and now 12 yards. Tim Brando, what do you have for us? I'll take you back out to Los Angeles, Ron. Reggie Perry goes to work again to Yanni Jackson, this time 6 yards, makes the score. 24-21. Coming up at halftime, Lee and I will give you three different national championship scenarios, so stay with us. <laughs> okay, we will look forward to that. Five minutes right now left until halftime in this ball game. The Hurricanes leading by two and driving. Pat Searcy in front, and he's going to be stopped. Maybe a gain of one, that's about it. McManus finally made the tackle. Second 
he jumped into that six-man front that time. Gino Toretta had the counter called. I think he would have rather had the quick passing game that they threw to Horace Copeland, number 88, when he fumbled it the previous series. But he stayed with the run, and there just wasn't anything there against that front. McManus already five tackles in the game, and four of those are solo. Timeout called by Gino Toretta, so let's take it with him. 4.09 until halftime, and it's Miami 9-7. As you look at the score, total yardage in this ball game so far, Miami 181 to Boston College 149. Second down for the Hurricanes. Boy, look at Pat. Another huge hole for him, and he'll take it down to the 11-yard line. Flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Camara made the tackle. That's going to be holding against the Hurricanes. Mike, I think Virginia may be as improved, if not more so, than any team in the nation. Boy, they really waxed VPI today. Two most underrated quarterbacks in the country, Matt Blunden. And East Carolina's quarterback, Jeff Blake. But Matt Blunden, I think, broke the record today, not throwing an interception. But uh, I had the game last year when they played Virginia Tech, and it was a rough game for him. But I really believe he's a pro prospect. Now that basketball is out of his system maybe I think that guy can go on Matt Blunt can have a successful career in pro football Better. look at the penalties here drive these coaches crazy at halftime already equaled their game average <laughs> pressure up the middle it is caught by Bell yeah he held on he spun over for a moment couldn't tell if he dropped it or not. They say complete at the 15-yard line. That was David Jones, who was coming after Toretto. Well, they came on a twist, and the offensive lineman picked it up in pretty good shape. Watch the twist by the lineman of Boston College. It's picked up fairly well, and Gino Toretta throws off his back foot to his tight end again, Coleman Bell, who's had a big night, number 17. Six receptions now for Bell. Running play, I don't know if he got the first down or not on third down. That was McManus who hopped up into the hole, number 53, and made the stick on him. Now you see why McManus leads this team in tackles and has 149. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten from BC tonight, 9-7. to seven. Good ball game. Miami a huge favorite in this one tonight. You see, we got less than... Three minutes until halftime. Ron, if he didn't make it here, I think he'll go for it on fourth down. Try to get the first down. Yeah! Yeah! Darryl Spencer will bring in the play from across the way. Larry Jones will also come in. And, of course, Larry is 6 feet, 244 pounds. And... I'd be shocked if he didn't get it. Or a quarterback sneak. He's going to pass up the field goal, which I think is a good move here. Quarterback sneak. Jones off the right side. He'll have the first down. Brian Howlett, who was a sophomore out of Quincy, Massachusetts, is down on the bottom of the pile. Time, our halftime report with Tim Brando and Lee Corso. They'll bring us up to date on some of these rivalries as the Hurricanes have a player down at the 15-yard line. Rudy Barber has been shaken up. They'll talk about some of the rivalries. Michigan with a huge win over Ohio State today. But uh, Coach Cooper got an extension of his contract. They talked about they're going to have three different scenarios now for a national championship. I wonder if Lee and Tim just sit around there and just try to write those up and... <laughs> <laughs> try to figure them out. There's a man that's going to have a lot to do with who wins the national championship, Dennis Erickson. Right now, he's sitting in the catbird seat. Well, ESPN will have the same Miami Hurricanes on again next weekend as they take on a team from the left coast in San Diego State. You've seen them this year. They're very explosive. They really are. They have the, one of the two top freshmen this year. I think Marshall Falk and 
and uh, Sam Adams, this is a player we're going to see his Thanksgiving Day, Texas A&M defensive line with two really impressive freshmen along with Eric Zyra, the quarterback from Georgia. Look at Boston College dropping in those two outside people, and here comes the blitz up the middle. Pass is, oh my goodness, Michael Reed just dropped six points. And Gino Toretta is standing here going, <laughs> where'd he come from? Well, they forced the check off. They forced Gino Toretta to move the back up, throw the little pick route. The number 17, Michael Reed, knew what was coming. And when the ball was released, he broke on the interception. And he had that football, and he had a lot of real estate in front of him if he would have picked it off. Five-step drop, great shot, complete to Spencer, and he'll be out of bounds at the two-yard line. Well, Spencer just came right off the tail of the wide receiver, took it to the sideline, and nobody was there covering him. Well, they give him a different look, Ron. They went to two receivers on each side instead of the look where they had three receivers to one side and balanced up the defensive backs of Randy Edsel in Boston College a little bit more and ran the out route with Darrell Spencer, number 35. Two tight ends in the ball game for the Miami Hurricanes on first and goal. This is a ninth play on the drive. Patton will take it to the, he says, touchdown. Kamara was out there making the hit on him, and the official who got bumped on the play came back up and gave us a touchdown signal. Martin Patton stretched the ball out like a good back. He knew he was close, and he just took the football and broke the plane with it to the touchdown. Reached to the cross. Carlos Huerta. He converts this one. Watch Martin Patton to the right side. Two tight ends in the ball game. He's running behind the block of his offensive tackle. Now I can reach the ball out for the touchdown. Four went out of bounds. Here's another look. Hand off by Toretta. Again, they had a stretch on the defense because they had the extra tight ends in. Patton with just the extra effort to get it in the end zone. And you can see, as Mike said, he extended the arm, put the ball across the end zone line. Martin is a sophomore from Missouri City, Texas, which is just south of Houston. So 2.26 left until halftime in a hurricane, 16 to 7. You have to be impressed with the way Boston College has played on defense. Uh, Steve Zabel, the defensive coordinator who coached defense and was a defensive coordinator at Colorado State last year for Earl Bruce, has brought his defensive style here. And so far in the first half, they've given problems to the Miami offense. Ten plays, 65 yards, three minutes and 47 seconds. And the three-yard run by Patton. Duke's on the run. Ball gets by him. Well... There's that speed. I'm telling you, you better not make an error against the special teams or you're going to pay for it, and uh, Duke will testify right now. Now, the college basketball spotlight ships to Hawaii next week, and we'll be there for the action. Monday's game features Arkansas, the number three team in the country, and Minnesota at 4.30 Eastern time. Then number 24, Arizona State versus Rice at 9.30 Pacific time. It's the Maui Invitational starting on Monday right here on ESPN. Mitchell. And he stays in bounds. It's Darren Smith who finally latches onto him. A lot of the coverages that Miami are running are they're running to Mark Shimura, number 89. Pete Mitchell's on the other side, number 82. It's a one-on-one -on -one coverage with the linebacker, and Glenn Foley wisely takes the football to number 82, Pete Mitchell. Well, Mitchell now has three catches himself for 27 yards in this uh, tight end oriented pass game. Shamira had 39 receptions on the year coming into this one, and Pete Mitchell had 24. Foley. 
And that's Mitchell again. Smith along with Eric Miller on the stop for Miami as you see the clock running down. He crossed both tight ends and Mark Tremuro when he went across the middle linebacker Michael Barrow went with him. He's so uh, he wants to make sure he looks up Mark Tremuro on every passing route. And that clears it for the other tight end Pete Mitchell. Cannon and Cannon, they say, did not get out of bounds at the 49 yard line. 16 yards. I'm impressed with their offense, also, Boston College. This is a team that started off with a very difficult schedule. And I said, there's a job that Tom Coughlin is accomplishing here at Boston College. After you lose early in the year, sometimes kids have a tendency, maybe they just start to question some of the things you're doing, but the kids have stayed with him. Transition year, he's been able to, to show them some success at the end of the season. And of course, he's got this young fellow with him for two more years after this one. And look at the night he's having. 11 of 13, 125 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. And the interception wasn't totally his fault because Barrow made such a fine defensive play, he took it away from from uh, Tanura, who is one of the best tight ends around. I agree with you. I think that interception was just caused by Michael Barrow just ripping the football away and uh, causing the interception. Glenn Foley was recruited by Miami. He was recruited by everybody in the East. Uh, he just a, was a fine prospect out of high school. And Jack McNell and his staff, Jack McNell, who's a very solid football coach here at Boston College, brought him in. Now Tom Coughlin's working with him. And he is developing as he grows along and, uh, and gets experience in this offense. We're talking about Barrow with the interception. Don't forget the halftime reports in Brando and Lee Corso. Barrow has five tackles on the game tonight, plus the interception. Oh, he did not pick up his running back. That's going to be caught by Murphy, the fullback. I'll tell you, Dukes had dropped off into the flat, and nobody had picked him up. He but missed him. But Foley was too busy. <laughs> I guarantee you, he had his hands full. Clock runs with 50 seconds now. I'll tell you what. It's going to be a second down and short, although he stopped the clock. Miami was offside by a country mile over there on the right side as Kevin Patrick just came out of the blocks and flying. And he was back before the uh, quarterback even had the snap. Five against the defense. <laughs> this is where you look for Chimuro. Cross that 50-yard line. Try to get him free. They're going to split him out a little bit. Try to get him where they can get him on a linebacker. Well, the coaching, the coaching staff at Boston College said he's best on the verticals. In other words, when you're sending him straight down the field, that he really will come up with the football well. Let's see if that's what they do. Yep. Complete and out of bounds at the 35. This time it's Joe DiNucci. Joe's only 5'9", 174 pounds, but he made the reception, and there is a flag down. That's got to be holding against Boston College. Boston College offensive line is having trouble with that front four of Miami. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. I'll tell you what, this, re this referee's got more air time tonight than Adrian oh. does. God <laughs> damn, there's been so many penalties in this game, but the reason you're getting so many holds on Boston College is they're in a definite passing uh, situation, and they just are having such a tough time with that front four. They just can't control them. And they just have to rush the pass. I mean, that's very difficult to block them. They want a little more air time. <laughs> Come on, guys. Can't be that tough. Uh, 
no time moved off the clock on that last play. So they just made a catch up there as they took four seconds off. Situation, second down. The new line of scrimmage is the 43. They got to go to the Miami 41 for a first down. Flag comes down. That's going to be for a face mask against uh, Miami. So that'll prolong things here. Very vocal crowd here at Boston College. If, look at the penalties already. Referee. 18 of them in the first half. These officials are going to have to order a whirlpool at halftime to get their arms in, back in shape. Face mask, personal foul on the defense, 15 yards. Wow. Five yard variety. Kind of thought that's what it would be, but this one, the major, and of course it carries the automatic first down. And Dennis is out on the field and he's hot. And I don't uh, I don't know if I blame him. I saw the face mask, but it didn't look like a 15-yard variety. Well, this is where if you're a basketball coach, you get a technical. <laughs> Well, if there were such a thing in football, uh, Dennis would get it right now. He's chapped. Foley throws it complete at the 29. That was Boyd who made the reception. Clock will be stopped until they get the chains secured. And I'll tell you what, now Boston College, that time, it's their timekeeper. Mike, I'm looking at the clock. Two more seconds went off after the ball had hit the ground. Shouldn't happen at home. The clock continued to roll after, after the ball had been thrown into the turf. It should have been at least 20, if not 21 seconds on there. <laughs> and a little uh, discrepancy as far as the big clock as well, showing... 24 and about now they take it down. 19 is the correct time. 19 seconds until half time. Foley is slung down at the 29 yard line. And Boston College will call the timeout. Not so sure you don't take your field goal right now. They used a last timeout if that is their last timeout that they just gave them. They have time for one throw into the end zone, but I, I think you're going to run it real close. From where the ball is down, it's going to be about a 46-yard attempt if they go for it from here. Now coming up at halftime, the halftime report is... Brando and Mr. Corso will be along to bring us up to date on what's been going on in, in college football. Thursday night, Mike and the punch doctor and myself, Jerry Punch, will be down in College Station, Texas for the annual soiree between Texas and Texas A&M. And then on Saturday, we're the uh, the first game of the, the triple header in Birmingham with uh, Alabama and Auburn in, in that one. Ron, they're going to take one throw here, try to throw it to the end zone, or they have to throw something that's an out route with 10 seconds to go. No timeouts left. Something to the corners. And it is intercepted by Miami. 47, Ryan McNeil came away with the interception. And with that, the end of the first half. So let's take a break. We are at halftime with our score. Boston College 7, the Miami Hurricane 16. On a halftime, 16 to 7, our score with the top ranked Miami Hurricanes. And it's been a hard fought situation for them. It's not one where they have just run away and have hidden. 
Mike, let's take a look at some videotape of the first half and some mistakes that Boston College has made, which has cost them dearly. First of all, a fumble by Dukes, and nobody's close to him. He's just trying to put it away. Well, they had a play because they had an unbalanced line into the short side of the field, and you can see he had some yardage to gain if he could have just held on to the football. But you're right. He tried to tuck it away, and it just, uh, just got away from him. Now, something that happened just before the end of the half, after looking at the videotape, it has been ruled no interception by Miami. But you're going to find out as you watch this that Boston College really gets the short end of the stick on this deal. Well, there's a little confusion here by the official because they thought first it was an interception by Miami. But you're going to see the ball clearly hit the ground. Uh, Tom Coughlin elected to try one pass before trying the field goal with 10 seconds to go. Now listen to this and watch the clock as the ball's being thrown by Glenn Foley. He took just a little bit too long. Now listen. There you hear the whistle with one second left. They should have had one second with a chance to kick the field goal. Okay, Mike, and you're exactly right. You could see it. You could hear the whistle, and you can clearly see the clock. One tick left on it. In fact, after the uh, kickoff, we will hear from Coach Coughlin and his reaction because Coach Coughlin and his staff thought there should have been time left as well. We talked about the Miami coaching staff was uh, upset with the officials as they came off the field. Well, Boston College was equally upset. Beckley's kick, and Miami's going to take it over from the 30-yard line, Martin Patton with the return. Now let's get the reaction from uh, Coach Coughlin. He talked with Adrian Karsten just a few moments ago. What was the beef at the end of the first half? The time, what was going on? Well, we thought there was one second left when the ball was clearly on the ground after the incomplete pass. They evidently thought it was an interception, so the clock didn't stop, but the ball was laying on the ground. We went for a play with 10 seconds left. There's no way we can kick a four to seven yard field goal into a slight win. That hasn't happened for us all year. So we went for one more play, then we would make the desperation kick, thinking that we'd either have a touchdown, throw it out of bounds, or kick the ball on the next snap, and 10 seconds elapsed. We talked to Glenn about not hesitating. There was a little hesitation, but that's what the discussion was about, is whether there was one second left or no time. Coach, good luck second half. Ron, back to you, sir. Thank you, Adrian. So, I clearly think he has a beef, too. I think they blew it. I think the officials blew it. I think they should have had a chance for a field goal with one second to go. I agree with you after looking at those video things. Patton straight up the middle. Boy, he can really get a quick step on you. First half statistics. All even in first downs. Yardage very, very close. If you're Miami, the thing that probably upsets you the most if you're the coach is those 12 penalties for 86 yards. Boston College has six for 63 yards. Sloppy first half. The officials, again, played a part in the first half. But Boston College is staying right with them step by step. But this is going to be an important drive by Miami to open up the third quarter. It's a very long first half as well, Mike. Pat, oh, does he get banged by Marinaro. Mike Marinaro, the junior from Andover, Massachusetts. Third and short. Watch the ball given to Martin Patton on the left side. But see the penetration. Number 62, Mike Marinaro, came from the back side and made the play before Patton could get to the line of scrimmage and stop them from the first down. Now Rusty Madera is in to do the long snapping for Miami. Snyder's kick, not a good one, off the side of his foot, and in fact now takes a Boston College bounce and goes out of bounds at the 39-yard line. So the Eagles get very good field position to open here in the second half. Some individual numbers in the first half. Bell, five receptions, 53 yards and a touchdown. Barrow with five tackles, and he had the interception, which led to the first Miami touchdown. Boston College, Mitchell, the number two tight end, five receptions for him. Foley. Ball is almost intercepted by Armstead at the 50-yard line. As Foley was being hit, 
and he was just going to take it downtown on the first down. Eric Miller is the man who hit him. And see, he knows he had somebody open. Eric Miller and Kevin Patrick came from the backside. Glenn Foley just took us a little bit too long to deliver this football. You'll see the pressure coming from his blind side. Watch Patrick, number 86. Watch Miller, number 95. Just took a little longer to throw the football. Should have been intercepted by Armstead. 13 of 17, one interception and one touchdown. 144 yards for Foley. Here comes Miami, all out blitz. And the ball is tipped and almost caught as Farms came over and made the tackle. Sometimes when your team is a little bit asleep in football, you start to try to generate them a little bit by blitzing, by trying to get them more active. And it looks, it appears like Miami on defense is saying, we're going to go after Glenn Foley. We're going to man up their receivers. We feel like we have more speed than they have. And we're going to try to force the issue a little bit. You know, Toretta, you can see him on the bench sitting there talking with Costa, who's the backup quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes. 16 to 7, our score. Just over 13 minutes to play third quarter. Blitz again, and this one for Mitchell incomplete as Foley wound up in a heap under Armstead back at the 26. Well, this is how you try to change momentum if you're the coach. You just start sending those linebackers. Watch Michael Barrow and Jesse Armstead. They're going to get in Glenn Foley's face and try to force a bad throw. And they're not a big man coverage football team, but they're going to play it tonight. Kevin Williams, and you want to keep it away from him if you can. See those numbers. He's cumulative. Kushner will kick it straight away. Uh, actually angles it away. Williams makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So let's take a break. 12.49 left in the third quarter. Miami on top. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Miami versus Boston College, is brought to you by your Toyota dealer and the quality line of 1992 cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And by Comfort Tech Shoes by Porsche. Try a pair and get comfortable. Well, as we come back to play, the Miami Hurricanes flagged for a personal foul. And Mike, that's 13 penalties. They're three away from tying their school record, which was 16 in last year's Cotton Bowl game. Concentration's not good when you have that many penalties. Coretta with the delay. Patton gets outside, and he'll take it to the 15-yard line. And a play that looked as though it's just not going to go anywhere. Shorter defensively for Boston College. He winds up with a gain of almost seven yards in the play. The other problem for Miami, there's Miami's play selection. 20 rushes, 19 passes. Good mix against what they're facing defensively. But that personal foul call really hurts them because now it's second and long. Coleman Bell is tied in. What an outstanding game he has had. And Kevin Williams was lucky as Bell came down that he did not roll up on the back of his legs and injure him. And in fact, BC has a player shake it up. It's Stephen Boyd. Miami's been successful going to Coleman Bell, the tight end, 6'2", 225 junior. Little delay out there to Coleman Bell. They released all the receivers downfield. Coleman Bell blocked and released up the field. Gino Toretta wisely threw him the ball. Get close to the first down. Bell now with six receptions for 63 yards. You know that with this injury to uh, to Boyd, it looks as though it is it is not real serious. He's now up. Boston College only has five defensive backs that really are healthy and have any kind of experience to play because of, of injury. McGillis went out with Mono earlier this week. To this point, Ron, they have done a good job slowing the great wide receiver speed of Miami down. They haven't had a big catch to this point. Quick out pass is caught. 36 Lamar Thomas. First catch for Lamar Thomas tonight. Junior out of Gainesville, Florida. Waldy Clark, 29, was out there to make the hit on him. Gino Toretta checked off. 
Moved Martin Patton up to be a blocker. Now you got man-on-man -man coverage, and he's going to just throw the quick stop route to Lamar Thomas, number 36. Get past the sticks for the first down, and of course he gets uh, a ride as he's just thrown out of bounds. sacked and now a flag comes down back at the 17 Dan Kerr loss of 13 yards plus they're going to get Daryl Spencer number 35 probably for a clip or a hold because they're trying to get Gino Toretta outside watch Gino Toretta fake now you're going to see Daryl Spencer come back number 35 his job is to block the defensive end but he just gets a clip on number 91 Kerr. Dan Kerr Flippy on the offense, half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. Dan Kerr read that play, he knew it was coming, a little counter pass, a little naked, he stayed up the field, he got up the field, and he didn't really give Daryl Spencer, number 35, a chance to block him or a chance to position himself. It was just the way he played that play. For people sitting at home saying, I didn't know that could be a clip back there, it's outside the three-yard zone. Oh, it was so definitely say. a clip. First down in nearly an acre, 32. Toretta gets it away to Patton. That was almost a two-handed pass, but he made sure that he got it off to him. And they wind up with positive yardage. Good for 12. He's been in a lot of big ball games, Gino you know, Toretta. And you want to frustrate a defense. Number 90, Ted Page, is going to have a sack here. But Toretta's so big and strong. Here he's got him, but he's got the a sense to just flip the ball to Patton for the good game. And again, a good decision by Gino Toretta. It matters not if it's a spiral or going end over end. Martin Patton's also injured and has now left the ball game. Larry Jones, number 23, the freshman from Gainesville, has come in replacing him. And set the screen up, and boy, Boston College had that one smelled out. As Jones, as soon as he made the reception, he got whacked down and very hard. It's going to go for maybe a gain of one, and that's it. Watch John Ravenna, number 42. The top of your screen. He's going to rush. There's usually the first block. They try to chop you, but he reads screen and kind of just falls into the play. If he turns around the other way, he might even make the interception. Intercept. They got the fans in the ball game now here. It is third down. And the line to make the 41. You know, to keep the air one out. Just throw it as deep as you possibly can. Hope for something good to happen. It is tipped and almost intercepted. Stephen Boyd, I believe, is the man who's got a hand on it. And if you're Boston College wanting to air it out, and you want something to happen good for you. Boston College now with this field position and such long yardage for Miami, I would think that they would go for the block. Paul Snyder came into this ball game with an average of 39.6. And he barely got it away. Michael Reed will let it go, so we'll take a break. Hurricane, 16 to 7. So Boston College shuts down Gino Toretta on that last drive, and penalties did not help his situation, his, his own team. Now it's Foley's turn. Let's see what he can do. from the backside still gets it away and Chimera was getting mugged Smith called for the interference another late flag Glenn Foley did a nice job of getting rid of that football but he kept a tight end in the block they kept number 82 Pete Mitchell in the block to try to help him against that strong front line of the Miami defense now Mike Bill Shaughnessy has just come into the ball game. Now, I don't know if Miami has noticed him or not, but you might explain one of a couple of plays that BC was running. He is the backup quarterback. Well, when you bring a second quarterback in the game, 
look for a possible double pass to use the quarterback. They may just put him in one play uh, to just to try to disguise it, but I would think if they have him in, you're going to look for a big trick play right here with the backup quarterback, Bill Shaughnessy, in the game. We'll see the Hurricanes, and, and BC is hurrying to the line of scrimmage. So there he is, that's Shaughnessy. Junior from Clifton, New Jersey. That's what they're doing. Now he can throw because that was a lateral. Gets it out there and it is incomplete at the four. Clarence Cannon, the intended receiver. You have to take your chances in a ball game, and that's one that they felt once they crossed the 50-yard line. That's a throwaway down. They bring in Bill Shaughnessy, number 10, line him up. There you see Bill Shaughnessy, the backup quarterback, just takes a couple steps, gets behind Glenn Foley, catches the ball, steps up. Now he's a quarterback and throws the ball deep and takes a lick after he throws it. Here's the pass downfield to Clarence Cannon, number 27. A little bump right here. Bumped him out of bounds. They got away with that. Top of the eyes, Duke's little stiff arm action there. He'll take it down to around the 40, gain of a couple. This is what Miami has been able to do. They've been able to shut down the run a little bit lately on Boston College and forcing them to throw the football. Now look for an all-out blitz from Miami, but if I'm Boston College, I might try to use three receivers in a tight end because I match up a little bit better against their secondary backs. You can see that offensive line as they break the huddle. BC with some very big guys up front. Britton, also Parchinski, both in the 265, 275 range. They set the screen. Oh, he cut the wrong way. He took it outside instead of coming back in. Boy, they blitzed him too. They came again on third down. Screen was set for Clarence Cannon, number 27. Here's the play, watch. Clarence Cannon come, comes back in on the middle screen, the old Bobby Bowden screen, set pretty well. But again, played pretty well by the defensive backfield, number 31, Darrell Williams, the free safety of Miami. Fourth down, and of course, BC will go for it from this field position. Darnell Campbell is the lone setback. will be sacked by Smith. Darren Smith, the junior from Miami, will knock him down at the 44-yard line, and the Hurricanes take it over just like that. Remember this play right here, because field position just changed about 40 yards on a fourth down play. You have an opportunity here. They go for it on fourth down. Here comes the blitz. Jesse Armstead, number one. Michael Barrow, number 56. Here comes the other backer, number 45, Darren Smith. They pressure Glenn Foley with a sack. But now, instead of punting him down into the hole, the ball's on the 44-yard line. Field position has just changed drastically. Now Miami has to take advantage of that. The Hurricanes leading by nine, 16 to seven. A little reverse action here. Thomas gets one block. That was Coleman Bell, number 17, the tight end, who came peeling back to throw that block. You know, watch Gino Toretta set up the reverse. Comes number 36, Lamar Thomas. Here's you're going to see the block. It's that's not a clip. Coleman Bell, number 17, pretty good job. Lamar Thomas just gets back to the line of scrimmage. I'm going to go again. What I said, you talk about field position. They Boston College must stop them right here. There's Tom Tuberville, linebacker coach from Miami, talking about that last series. That breaks it open. And all of a sudden, a 10-yard gain, it was going to be a second down and 12, and Patton breaks it open as he slides to the outside. Michael Reed had to make the stop. Field position, Ron, is so important, especially in a close ball game where it's a 16-7 to game, and Miami can just make a big change on that right now if they can keep this drive alive. Boston College and their defense must shut them down right now. Straight ahead with the run not going to have it. That is Tom McManus again. Oh, what a ball game 53 is in. It's exactly what they needed out of their defense. Tom McManus reading the one back. Remember what I said, when you run a one back offense, there's no lead blocker. So McManus, Tom McManus, number 53, is able to come through and make the tackle. 
Kelvin Harris was there to block, and he destroyed him and came right through him. It's a good fake situation for Miami if they choose to do it, or punt him in the hole and change that field position. Paul Snyder will punt it away. Reed calls to the fair catch, and he makes it. But it's time now for a weekly presentation of the Toyota Leadership Award, and tonight's winners are from the University of Miami, Darren Smith, a junior from Miami. He is a co-academic captain of the team, speaks to high school kids about the Say No to Drugs program, as well as the emotionally handicapped elementary school children. And for Boston College, it's Mike Williams, a senior from Brockton, Massachusetts. Mike is a four-year walk-on as a special teams player and plans to enroll in law school this semester. Toyota is pleased to donate $1,000 to each player school's general scholarship fund. Gamble weaves through a hole on the left side and takes it out to the 26-yard line. That's a gain of nine. Boston College lines up with the three tight ends. The quarterback, Glenn Foley, can go either way with it. Once he sends that man in motion, he can check either way with the run. And he checked to the way the man went in motion, Pete Mitchell. Now, this is the way they started their series. This is where they've had success, when they mixed the run in with the pass. Ken carries 39 yards for Campbell. right back up the middle and that will be the BC first down on the sideline you got to give credit to this crew right here the Boston College defense has played very well that was a big series because they took the gamble on fourth down they haven't been able to handle the blitz in Miami Miami's blitz has been the difference Tom number linebacker Tom McManus number 53 has just had an incredible game for the defense of Boston College showed great leadership has also made a lot of big plays for them Jamiro with the reception, and he will dive forward to the 45-yard line. Good for 15 yards in the pass play. To get blitz, the one thing to do is try to change the pocket a little bit. Move your quarterback around. Tom Coughlin now takes the fake, takes the zone stretch play, comes back outside, throws the ball to Mark Jamiro for a first down. Mark didn't get to play in this game last year. He had a pulled hamstring muscle. And uh, the only game since he's been at Boston College that he was unable to participate in. So he wanted desperately to be able to play this evening. Big opening for Duke. All the way to the 32-yard line of Miami. McNeil saves the score. And now they're back in rhythm. They're running the football. Good play action. Steve's by Tom Coughlin. But what they did on this play, they showed all tight ends to the wide side of the field ran the ball back into the unbalanced side where they only had two linemen Miami adjusted by slanting to the three tight ends and they came away from the slant with big yardage now look for Miami to heat them up again bring all the linebackers we'll see how BC handles the blitz Dukes behind traffic inside the 25 to the 23 McNeil again from the secondary and Britton, give credit to big number 79. What a block he had at the line. Oh, you're right, Ron. I tell you, I like what Tom Coughlin's doing with the three tight ends. He's now playing hardball with the Miami defense. Watch the three tight ends. The tackle pulls. Chucky Duke sees a hole, moves up inside, gets a good block from number 82, Pete Mitchell. Picks up big yardage to make it a second and short. As you can see from the replay, Boston College got away with the, all the linemen were not set. Those tight ends were still going down in the stance when the ball was set. This is Campbell. Hang on. When you get a team blitzing and you get them moving up the football field, always try to find a way to stop that penetration. And one of the ways is the trap up inside. Watch the defensive lineman come way upfield, and there's the trap. Darnell Campbell with the run. Tom Nalen with the trap, number 64. Our situation, 16 to 7, Miami leads. We have less than three minutes to play third quarter. And Boston College is driving. Flag comes down, tackle is broken, it's inside the 10. And I'll tell you what, it looks like the umpire has just called another offensive holding call. <laughs> if, if this were a basketball game, the cries out of the stands would be, let them play. Both sides. 
And that's exactly what it is. Cries out of the stands because, I mean, they have made some calls here tonight. Holding on the offense. Ten yards, repeat, second down. Ron, the tough thing about when you play Miami is they, they play with four down linemen, but they're always getting their linemen upfield. They just shoot out of the blocks. Jerome Brown, Cortez Kennedy, Russell Maryland. They always have the great linemen. They line them up in gaps and just hit penetration. And you'll get a lot of holds that way because they are getting up the field on your line. Well, Miami's been penalized 15 times. Boston College now seven times. Total yards this head. Campbell's going to take it to the 20. Michael Barrell for that middle linebacking position, number 56. They have to come away with something here. They, they had that blown opportunity where they fumbled the football in the first half, Chucky Dukes, and then not given the opportunity to kick the field goal just with one second to go. So they're down here again on the 20-yard line. They have to get some points against this Miami defense. Coming up at the end of the ball game, Mike and I will be picking the Visa players of the game, one from each squad. So stay tuned for that. Foley for the end zone. Clarence Cannon in the corner of the end zone got his man behind him. And that young fellow, Mr. Foley, put it on line. Great block by Mike Joanovich, number 72, to keep it alive for Glenn Foley to be able to roll to make that throw to Clarence Cannon. John Wright knocks it home. And as we go to break, let's look at it one more time with 148 left in the third quarter. It makes it a two-point lead by the Miami Hurricanes. Watch Glenn Foley. There's a block by 79. Dan Breton gives him some time. Throws the ball in the corner. Watch the feet of number 27 to try to drag him uh, that's a, for the touchdown. What a catch. We'll be right back. Miami by two. Clarence Cannon is being upstaged right there, but he upstaged everybody just a few moments ago with a gorgeous catch in the corner of the end zone. That was an 83-yard drive, Mike, by Good DC. Drive. Good play call by Tom Coughlin. Team's all fired up. They're going to get the boot kick right now. Try to keep it away from number five, Kevin Williams. Now he's going to kick this one away. Darrell Spencer. And Spencer falls down at the 22-yard line. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, I've got the most valuable player in the Canadian Football League, Doug Flutie. Let me test your memory for a minute. Have any had recollection of where you were seven years ago tonight? Not a clue. Miami? <laughs> no, it's, it's something that uh, a lot of people have been talking about all week, and hopefully we can get them again this week. How many times have you seen that play? At least thousands. I don't know. I haven't kept track, but uh, every time I see it, it brings a smile to my face. Call it the miracle in Miami. Miracle in Boston tonight, Doug. Hopefully. Why not? You know, everybody's pumped up for it. We're totally out playing them right now, so take it to them. Doug, thanks very much. Ron, he's walking around with a cellular phone. His wife is expecting a child any minute. <laughs> That's what I understand. And we appreciate him taking time to come on with us. Oh, what a stick at the 19-yard line. Tamara came up and just ratted him for a loss of four. Oh. This game plan of the Boston College coaches has just come together tonight. And I think one thing you'll find out of this football game, coaches like to borrow things. And one thing you'll find about coaches that are going to play, play Miami in the future, this three tight end offense will be something people will take a very close look at because it's given Miami some problems. Toretta's pass. Incomplete as Copeland didn't catch it with his hands. He allowed it to get in and hit his pads, and it came off of it. It'll be third down. 
of what Miami needs right now. Things aren't going their way. They need somebody to step up, some leadership role, and of course that's going to fall on the shoulders on offense of Gino Toretta. On defense, it has to be a player like Michael Barrow with Rusty Medeiros out at Boston College is playing sky high. I tell you, these fans are just going berserk. Nobody is sitting. McManus with the second sack of Toretta. And you know Toretta made a wise decision, though, because everything was covered, and he didn't. Just, he decided not to throw the football, and he took the sack by McManus, number 53. They are calling holding against Boston College. Well, so much time developed for Gino Toretta. He bought time. He didn't want to run the football. He didn't think he could pick up the first down. Illegal use of the hand on the defense. Ten yards. Third. What happened, obviously what happened is one of the defenders grabbed one of the receivers not to let him get away. Watch near the sideline. The left of your screen... See if we can pick up the hold. They just pushing the receiver out of bounds as the sack was taking place. That couldn't have been it. Do you Michael think? Reed, number 17, I believe that's what they called. Oh. <laughs> okay. Blitz comes up the middle. Toretta puts it up top. And Copeland has been forced out of bounds. That is a no play. So it is fourth down. Well, if you want an upset, you want to get to the fourth quarter, you want to get your crowd the ball game and your players sky high, and that's what they have. And Miami, with the winning tradition they have, those players are used to winning and they're used to being in these kind of games. So they need to respond, and both teams are responding well. Snyder barely gets it away. It's a good kick. Ball is fumbled but recovered immediately. Uh, Michael Reed came up and made the catch at the 45-yard line. So BC has good field position. I'll be sure and catch all the NFL action on Sunday. Starts at noon Eastern time with game day. And then following that action, NFL prime time, 7 o'clock Eastern time. And tomorrow evening, just after that, the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints, 8 o'clock Eastern time, all right here on ESPN. Ron, I keep going back to Tom Coff and what he's done with his offense right here. By going to the three tight ends, he's now kept Miami from blitzing his three tight ends also. Seven folks coming, and the pass is dropped by Chamura, of all people. <laughs> Now they come in with two tight ends on this series. Brought the tight end in motion. Pete Mitchell, number 82. Here comes the blitz again. They're going to blitz two tight ends, but not three tight ends. Glenn Foley throws just before Darren Smith gets to him. Mark Schmier just did not hold on to the football. If you just joined us, we have five seconds left in the third quarter. It is Miami 16 and Boston College 14. Running play not going to go anywhere. Jesse Armstead stepped up into the hole to make the hit. And that'll be the end of the third quarter. So let's take a timeout. And as we head to the final 15, they are standing here at Chestnut Hill. B.C. trails by only two. Welcome back. 16 to 14. Our score, Miami by two. And Boston College with the football. Very good field position with a third down and ten, though. And they need to advance the ball to the Miami 45 to keep this one alive. Blitz again. It is caught. Not going to be enough for the first down. Will be short by about a half.
fifth yard at the 46-yard line. McNeil and Hurley Brown combined in a stop. Mike, I don't think you can go for it right here, can you? I think it's a decision he's got to make right now. I think he's going to go for it. He's got fourth and a real short yard. Uh, he's, he's There's a lot of time left right here. A lot of time. Here. This is the one where you're not. He, you're right if you make it. You're wrong if you he, don't. He dodged, top. he dodged it one time in the ball game. He's going to come into the short side of the field. He's got all three tight ends on this side. He's going to come over here with it. has got to be knocked down for a loss it's barrel and look where Miami's going to get the football oh boy big defensive play Michael Barrel, number 56 keep repeating myself when you have one back there's not a lead blocker but they do have 82 Mitchell leading the block but Michael Barrow just shoots the gap, and you talk about a big play, change in field position. Again, a second, fourth down play that just didn't go. Now the defense has to respond and try to stop Miami. Miami's got to run the football. They only had four yards rushing in the third quarter. They have to establish the run. They're completely out of rhythm on offense. Four yards is all Miami had in the entire third quarter, and therein is the difference in the ball game. As the footing, you can tell, is a little bit slick and packing goes down. Every time on a quick cut, Miami's having a little trouble negotiating this uh, wet field. Inside the hashes to the boundary of, it has been tough for Martin Patton. But if you think back on the injury to Stephen McGuire, who was off to a great start, six rushes, I believe, for over 40 yards, and uh, they lost him to a knee. And Martin Patton, who was suspended and hasn't played, is now in the backfield. As a man wide open, Kevin Williams works his way to the sideline. It's his first catch of the night, and he'll wind up with nine yards in the play. Third down, third down. Tom McManus, one of the first men there to grab hold of him. They need a defensive stop here. Fourth down call. Again, putting the defense in a, in a bad position here. They have to respond and try to keep them from getting the first down, getting down into scoring territory. Patton again. Close to the first down. McManus again. Boy, if you're the Miami coaching staff, you got to be looking to double check to see if, if BC has more than one guy wearing 53 on the field tonight. You have to really give credit to the Boston College, co college coaches. That just, the game plan that they have stuck with this entire game, playing a whole nickel package against the Miami offense. Five DBs the entire ball game. Uh, and they've been very fortunate. They've allowed Miami only 16 points. I think Dennis Erickson goes for this one on fourth down. I think he has to go for it. If you're on the road like this, and you're not, he's not playing particularly well on defense. He needs to pick this first down up. Now watch number 53 to fire inside. John McManus is a junior. Boston College will have him for another year. He is from Edgewater, Florida. of the second effort he will have the first down. Why Miami got to got to dodge the one there because Boston College got people up the field again. Watch the linebackers now. There's no lead blocker on number 50. Steve Boyd, number 53, Tom McManus. They have a chance to stop him. They just don't make the play. He just gets out of the arms of number 50, Stephen Boyd. Tried to grab him with the jersey. A little too to high. Down. Yeah. They've had problems tackling all year, their coaches said. They've been a bad tackling football team. Pass is caught. Oh, my goodness. Spencer held on and... Charlie Brennan, who had a fumble recovery earlier tonight, just buried. Question is, who got there first, the ball or Charlie Brennan? I think he Number was a 28. Watch the three receivers. Watch the open receiver. Watch to see if he gets hit before the ball's there. Daryl Spencer. Right. It was close. Good catch and good concentration by Daryl Spencer, number 35, the junior tailback receiver. 
First down Miami from the 28. Toretta back across the field and Martin Patton dropped a football he should have caught. Right in his hands, Ron. Gino Toretta moved to the right, bought a little time. You see Dennis Erickson giving him the next play to take in. Time for a draw, trap, or screen on this defense, the way they're trying to work up the field, Boston College. up the middle. Toretta gets away and now gets the pass to Patton. Oh, what a job by Toretta. <laughs> that is incredible. He thinks extremely quickly on his feet. McManus is the man who was putting on the pressure. There was a flag down back at the line of scrimmage and it is against Miami. Tom McManus pressures Gino Toretta, but watch Gino Toretta. He's got his head up just flips the ball out, buys a little luck there, and the Martin Patton picks up the yardage, but all for naught because it's coming back. The feet coming back. What's the record in the Big East of penalties called? I don't know. We're going to have to check with uh, some people downstairs, but Miami, I mentioned to you, was getting close to their school record. I tell you, if they keep throwing flags like this, we might have midnight madness here in football. <laughs> Pass too tall as Bell. You could see the ball tip off his hands. Key for Boston College has been they've been able to get a pass rush out of their front four. Bring the linebacker McManus 53 and Stephen Boyd occasionally. But I think the biggest key is they've taken the wide receivers out of the game. Just think of how many long passes Gino Toretta has thrown down the football field to these wide receivers. He hasn't had, had that many where he's been able to complete them or throw the ball down the field. They've taken it away with the five defensive backs. Stephen Boyd, number 50, was hitting Toretta just as the pass was delivered and the receiver was open. Mike, that time BC was a little bit late in getting the defensive call in. And one of the things that Coach Brakowski said to us yesterday was that they do so much late shifting that Miami is going to try to get the playoff quicker. That's why, you're right, that's why Stephen Boyd comes through because he shifted it to the outside and came off the line of scrimmage. They have bothered the Miami offensive line with their movement. Snyder kicks this one a mile high, but it's going to go into the end zone. Miami tried to down it at the one-foot line, so let's take a break. 11-21 left in the ball game. Miami hanging on to a two-point lead. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Miami versus Boston College, is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Corbell Champagne. We have so much to celebrate. Corbell Champagne. For, for people who might be just tuning into this football game, 16 to 14, you saw the score right. Chris Erickson will tell you it's very right. He's not enjoying it probably the way everybody thought this ball game would go. They were like a 24-point favorite coming into this ball game. Dukes takes it across the 20 out to the 23. Talked about the Boston College staff, how they rebounded when they lost early in the year. Three other staff, Texas Tech, Spike Dykes, started off with some losses, and his staff responded to Stanford, Denny Green, and Virginia under George Welsh lost a couple games early. And that's a sign of good coaching when you can keep your club and keep them hanging in there. And Tom Coughlin and his staff deserve a lot of credit tonight. I agree with you. Like this time last year, he was coaching for the Giants on the way to the Super Bowl. Pass is dropped by Mitchell, and now here comes another late flag. And it's thrown by the umpire. Could it be offensive holding? This is incredible. 
Well, we've been talking about Coach Coughlin and his staff. Well, keeping the game close, it's one of the things he discussed with us. And we talk all the time about getting into the fourth quarter and having a chance to win. We get into the fourth quarter and the game is close enough that we have a chance to win. That's exactly where we want to be. Well, the, the scenario is there as far as he is concerned. He has it in a position that he might not have thought he was going to be able to with just over 10 minutes to play, only down by two. But these penalties are, are killing both teams. Duke, that's a nice cutback. And did you see him secure the ball that time? He did not try to put it away loosely when he had that big fumble back in the second quarter. When he cut back into the inside, he double clutched the football. Now this is a key down, third down and long yardage for the Miami defense. Try to cause a turnover. Kevin Patrick comes back into the ball game and Damon Bethel goes out on a defensive front for Miami. It's caught at the 30-yard line, and from where they've spotted it, that's going to be a Boston College first down. Clarence Cannon, who caught the touchdown pass moments ago. Boy, Clarence Cannon, he stopped right on the 30-yard line. It's going to be close. They're going to measure Watch at the bottom of your screen. Man coverage. Watch Clarence Cannon break on the out. He's inside the 30-yard line, and then the tackle takes him back further. Mike, that ball is not spotted where the foot was put down when the ball came. It, 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 I don't think Boston College is going to have it with this spot right here. Nope. Now, now for all you uh, armchair quarterbacks and coaches out there, do you go for this one? No, no way. You've got to punch the football. You've got nine minutes and 54 seconds left. You're only two points down. I'm glad you're earning your pay tonight, making these decisions. You're not telling me you would have gone for that, are you? No, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> saying that. But, uh, I'm just trying to make it interesting for the fans out there watching. Kushner. And, of course, this guy right here can make... Everything we're talking about is making it a very moot point. Have to kick away from Kevin Williams here. You got to kick ball in the hash. Kick it away from him. Do not let him return this football. So far, he is minus yardage on three punt returns. It's Kevin Williams, and he's looking for him. Look where he's lined up. He's looking for him to kick it out of bounds on the near side. He's trying to bait him. And the punt goes the other direction. And he's still going to be at minus yardage in return. Maybe he got one on that one. 38 yards and a kick. Loses one on the return. We'll be right back. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. There you see the situation. 16 to 14 Miami. Ron, I've run three straight plays. Ball is fumbled as Toretta came out from under center. Now a late flag comes down. And Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Very disappointed young man over my right shoulder. Steve is uh, very unfortunately has uh, got a lot of swelling in his left knee where he tore some of those ligaments or at least strained them. Now what may happen this week, Ron and Mike, is that he'll have to undergo arthroscopy but wait for a lot of the swelling in his knee to go down. He has a lot of internal bleeding. They've got to see what the situation is after the uh, the swelling goes down. They may even have to do some reconstructive surgery again. Okay, Adrian, Stephen McGuire on the bench, and you could see that number. Mike, that's incredible. 20 carries for 19 yards since he has left the football game. He was off on a record-setting night, and then the injury took him out of this football game. Cabrera spreads it at the 40-yard line. That's caught by Coleman Bell. So regardless of the five-yard penalty because of the procedure, Miami comes right back and picks up 14. Stephen McGuire went to Fork Union Prep School. He's from Brooklyn. He was went to the same school that Vinny Testaverde went to, and then he actually called the Miami coaches and told them he wanted to come to Miami. In 
to BC territory as Charlie Brennan has to come up and make the stop on Martin Patton. It's almost like the Hurricanes heard us talking about the lack of rushing game. I would just continue to run the football with Martin Patton. Have to establish the run. The penalties are what's hurt them on first downs, forced them to throw the football. But if they can continue to run the ball on first down, pick up their five, four or five yards, they put themselves in better position to throw the football. Comes a quick, quick out, quick pass. Here it is, near sideline to Kevin Williams. Breaks one, breaks two, breaks three tackles, and is down to the 30-yard line. And that's enough for the Miami first down. Because of just what I said, Miami running the ball last time with Martin Patton for good yardage. They came back, Boston College, with a seven-man front. Now it gives you receivers one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They were able to throw the quick out route to Kevin Williams and picked up another first down. Good checkoff by Gino Toretta. Two catches, 23 yards now for Williams. Larry Jones is the running back, number 23. And you can see the snap trying to catch BC as they're shifting. Ball comes loose. Now, was that bad or not? I think it should have been. Nobody's making a call. They're going to give it to Boston College. And the Miami coaches are out on the field. Ron, I'm going to tell you, I know I've been critical of the officials tonight, but this has been a horribly officiated football game, and I don't know what they're going to do here, but nobody made a call. Now they're going to change it. They're going to reverse it. They're going to change it and give it back to Miami. Wow, I'm telling you. Here you're going to see the play tackle made by number 53, Tom McManus, to see when the ball comes out. I think he was down, but again, nobody made a call. None of the officials took control of the situation on that play. Toretta sets the middle screen to Williams. Boy, they ran him right into traffic. 91 Dan Kerr was right there. Hey, one thing, Boston College isn't giving up an inch. They're knocking right with uh, Miami. And I talked to earlier about uh, there's two games left for Miami. They have San Diego State and they have Nebraska. And I'll tell you, both those schools will be looking for this film. The last five possessions by Miami. Miami, 3-3-3, three, 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 and then eight plays for 20 yards in the punt. Toretta on third down, gets it away, falling down, and Spencer with the reception. That will be the Miami first down. Ten yards in the play. They brought both linebackers again, Stephen Boyd, 50, and Tom McManus, 53, and Gino Toretta was falling down when he threw the football to Daryl Spencer. Winners find a way to win. Six minutes, 28 seconds, and now the clock is whistled back in. Said Nebraska earlier be looking at this film. It could be Colorado, could be Oklahoma. I, I, you know, you get the three big eight teams. But plus, all the teams they play next year are going to ask you for this film. Patton is drilled and knocked back by Kamara. And uh, the cornerback on the left side did an outstanding defensive job. Have to hold him at any point at all. They have to hold him to a field goal down here. Reddit's Dean Zabel, the defensive coordinator. Excellent plan on defense. Tom Coffin on offense and the entire coaching staff that have really developed a sound plan against the nation's number one football team. Coretta, good protection. Over the middle, incomplete. That one was just a little bit behind Bell. It'll be third down. The line to make is the eight. They have tried to go in the red zone area, the 30 yards and in area to the tight end number 17, Coleman Bell. Again, the ball was thrown a lot on this football. The Coleman Bell, as you talked about earlier, slipped. His feet came out from under him, and he had no control, and that's why he couldn't hold on to the football. Wet surface. Third down. Almost intercepted by Charlie Brennan. 
He already has one turnover tonight, but the fumble recovery probably should have two right now. They tried to go to the same play. 17 Coleman Bell on just an up route on the hash. Charlie Brennan was sitting back, number 28. Should have had the interception. Just broke in front and knocked it down, forcing a field goal. 38-yard field goal attempt by Carlos Huerta. And he knocks it through. Five minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the ballgame. And our new score, the Miami Hurricanes push that lead out to a five-point advantage, 19-14. to Carlos Huerta just converted on the field goal attempt, pushing his number one ranked Miami Hurricanes out to a 19 to 14 advantage. Chuck Duke will take it at the two. Oh boy. He won't get back to the 20 yard line as he got caught with a shoulder high stick. You see Pearson down there again. 38 Pearson has been in on at least four tackles in special teams tonight. Scoring drive, eight plays, 48 yards, three minutes, 59 seconds. Huerta with the 38-yarder. What Boston College needs now, Ron, is one of those Patton and New York giant drives where they take those long drives and 18-play drive and try to go down there and score a touchdown against this tough Miami defense. Foley tonight, 18 of 26, one interception, 205 yards. But that right there is what has gotten them going in the second half. Darnell Campbell with the run. And that's where Miami, that play against most other clubs, gets you at least 10 or 15 yards. They are so quick in the secondary to react. Maybe one of the best defensive backs in the country, Darrell Williams, the free safety, number 31. When he breaks on the ball, usually he's playing too deep, and he's sitting about 12, 15 yards deep on the hash. He just reacts so well to passes and runs. Almost intercepted by the band that Mike was just talking about, Darrell Williams. So now it's third down. I think Boston College heard old Paul Revere tonight because they, they've been looking for it about every way you can look for it. They have played, played these guys toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 4.38 left in the ball game. And the Eagles trailed number one Miami by only five points. Here comes the pressure in the middle. Pass is almost intercepted by Herbert James. And now BC has no choice. They have got to punt the football back. They sat right on the receiver, sent the blitz, knew that the receiver was going to break it off at about 12 yards. And just Herbert James, number 26, just was sitting there on the out route to pick it off. Just went right through his hands. Bill Kushner, five kicks tonight. He's done a very good job averaging over 42 yards per punt. Miami will not handle the football. What in the world? <laughs> Wood will touch it down and will we'll hold it right here. Well, you could see at the last minute there, the guy we're talking about, 38 Pearson, for some reason ran close to the football. That thing touches you all of a sudden. You get a chance for a turnover. I don't know what he was thinking there for a moment. But it touched him. He had a bus ride back to Miami. <laughs> Bill Kushner, the punter, punted at Palomar Junior College under Tom Kraft, who's a real, real good junior college coach out in California. But a good punt. hit by Tom McManus. He's been busy all night, Ron. Tom McManus. He's read the one-back offense. He's made key plays. He's been able to shoot, blitz inside, stop runs, been involved in the passing game. Uh, really done a fine job at the linebacker position.
Under four minutes to play. Back strings it out. Five, ten, fifteen. Count it off at twenty and bring it back because the flag has been thrown down. We have not seen these guys in the last two or three minutes, so let's get them back on camera. Good heavens. <laughs> oh, boy. They went to the outside stretch play that the Cincinnati Bengals used so well and effective over the last two years. Martin Patton gets outside. There may be the hold on number 90 by oh, Leon Searcy. Yeah. Yeah. Second down. Right now. Ted Page might have been held on that play. Well, school record tonight for uh, Miami. 18 for 136 yards. Boston College got to be getting close as well. I don't think when they grade these officials on Monday, they're going to be graded in the A or B column. <laughs> Credit that one to Stephen Boyd. Number 50 was coming pell-mell after the quarterback. Toretto had to get rid of it, and Patton had not turned around yet. They've had a tough time picking up Stephen Boyd when he shoots to the outside. He's an inside backer, and on plays where they take the back and move him in motion, they'll bring him to the outside, and the offensive tackles have had a hard time picking him up because of his quickness off the corner. Four out of 13 on third down conversion. Movement has bothered Miami's offensive line. Toretta's pass is caught. And let's see, did Spencer get pushed out of bounds? First they say yes. Who's going to give us a spot? The first one would not be the first down. And let's see where they put it down. He did not get the first down from that one right there. I know what you said. I'm not leaving the house. We're going to get split up. Watch Dino you know, Toretta here. Watch the throw. Now let's check the mark where it went out of bounds at. Good call. Maybe you even gave him a little bit. Been a, down, been a game of fourth downs. Jones will have the first down. Tom McManus came over to make the stop. Miami's had ran the same play on both fourth downs and, and had success going to the right side. Are you surprised he went for that? Yes. Uh, with only a five-point lead and about three minutes and ten seconds left to go in the ball game, I, I am as well. But he has confidence in his offensive line. He ran to Cersei's side. He ran to his tight end, Coleman Bell, Martin Patton. Uh, so, you know, he has a lot of confidence in his offense. Toretta gets back in the football. And it is for that reason right there that I'm surprised he went for it. Because of a wet field and just conditions that are not totally conducive to having 100% confidence means nothing if the conditions work against you. You know, when you go through a game, I'll tell you what's going through his mind. Boston College has had some success moving the ball. I know what you're saying. If you punt them down, they've got to go a long way. Right. But he just has so much confidence in his defensive football team and his offensive team. That's why they're the number one team in the country. I mean, he, he believes in them. He believes they can pick up a half a yard. This is Pat squares the shoulders, and he's going to wind up across midfield to Stephen Boyd. Right, call, comes call, over call, to make the hit. And with this, the timeout is called by Boston College as we have only 2.06 left to play in the ballgame, so we'll take it with them. Timeout on the field, Hurricanes 19, Boston College 14. Big third down play for Miami here to keep this drive alive. Boston College had to use a timeout, Ron. They got two left. Toretta's pass is complete. Thomas will hold on for dear life as they were trying to squeeze the ball away from him. That's the reason he stopped running and clutched the ball with both arms because Dan Kerr was holding on. A 
so 29, Waldy Clark. They're going to tag uh, Dennis Erickson with a uh, the old, uh, riverboat gambler uh, <laughs> tonight for that fourth down and in a half yard play, but he's been able to keep the drive alive and run that clock down to 152 and make Boston College now use their two timeouts. Timeouts. You got to use them now. Timing man is from Marinero stepping up to make the hit for BC, and now they have one timeout left as the Boston College Eagles, as they call it. So we'll hold it right here and reminding you as we look ahead Thursday night, have the uh, the great annual turkey affair this year. It's at College Station, Texas, as the Texas A&M Aggies, who have been extremely Exciting and also impressive uh, in their last five or six ball games. Take on the Texas Longhorns, 7:30 Eastern Time. I think R.C. Slocum's team has to be in the top five, at least the top six in the country of teams I've seen all year. They're impressive. I tell you, they they pack a defense with them. Bucky Richardson's the most underrated guy on a football team. The Tom Matty of college football this year. I mean, just does so many things for that football team. And Texas has a big, strong defense, so. Could be a shootout. And as you and I were discussing in the uh, the car, we're going to try to put together our list uh, for next week on our uh, uh, best of several. I, I think that we could go ahead and advance by saying that number 95, who plays defensive end for the Texas A&M Aggies, is uh, as good a freshman you think, I do too, that, that we've seen this entire year. Without a doubt. He's the best defensive player freshman in the country this year, Sam Adams. And uh, we're going to give him our awards next week. He'll be on the list. for Thomas and that one very close to getting some action from Eric Short. Well they caused the blitz. They, they blitzed him on defense. Now they force Gino Toretta into checking off. Instead of running the football and causing him to spend another time out, they threw the football. Should have had the completion but the receiver Thomas fell down. But now you don't have to stop the clock. Now you can use your last time out to force him to punt if you can hold him right here. around on defense again. They've done it all night long as the pressure comes right up the middle. And Toretta gets it complete. And Patton fumbles the football. And Boston College has recovered. Waldy Clark has made the recovery. Somebody better start looking to see if Doug Flutie's getting in a uniform here as we go down to the wire. Watch the play Gino Toretta makes. I'm telling you, he makes a great throw to Patton to make that catch. Here's the tackle. There's the ball going up in the air. And now Boston College has the football and still one timeout with 1.20 on the clock. That was Eric Shorter who made the hit and caused the fumble. Foley, complete, out across the 45-yard line. Shamura, the tight end, is there for 17. Down inside the 2 deep zone, now the chains move, so the clock stopped with 113. Seven years ago tonight, Boston College down in Miami beat him. Lightning strike twice. They say it doesn't. <laughs> we'll see in the next minute and 10 seconds. Foley gets it away. That ball is dropped, and boy, Keith Miller was having to turn around, but he had it in his hands, Mike. And a flag is down at the 45-yard line. Look at the holding on Miami on defense, it looks like. Keith Miller had that ball, just got turned the wrong way. But the penalty still picks Holden him up. On the defense, 10 yards, first down. 
18 penalties, 146 yards. I think they're watching this game in Washington, Florida State, Florida, Michigan, Texas A&M, the Bow Scouts. Foley just did a great job of getting rid of the football. And now 60 seconds left in this one. So the situation, it is a second down and 10. The line of scrimmage is the Miami 44. They're going to make them earn it, Ron. They're going to blitz them. And they're going to line up man-to-man -man coverage. Dennis Erickson defense, Tom Coverville, and Sonny Lubuck are going to make this offense earn these last 44 and a half yards. Here comes the pressure. And the looking screen is there. Clarence Cannon will take it for a couple, and that is about it. And here's where that swarming defense, that unbelievable quickness that Miami has, really comes into play as Boston College has just used their last time out of the night. Well, go back to the series that, that Miami had because they threw the ball in the last two plays. They were automatics at the line of scrimmage because of the blitz. It allowed Boston College to carry this time out after the fumble. Now they don't have any left with 53 seconds. You know, Toretta looks on. Out of his hands right now. He threw a completion, then it was fumbled. Boston College recovered it. And they have advanced the football to the Miami 42-yard line. Coming up next, the Residence Inn College Football School Board. One thing, if you're Glenn Foley, you don't want to take a sack now with, the, with no timeouts left, and you know Miami's going to heat you up. Tom Coughlin knows that he's going to get pressure from the linebackers, and that front four is just going to put their ears back and come on a pass rush. You look for the tight end, Mark Chimera, number 89. Whoever I'd look for, I'd look for quickly. Splitting him out. Nope, Miami stays in coverage. He only sends four. Foley drills it. It is complete to the 26-yard line. Ryan McNeil makes the tackle. Now you're going to have several throws into that end zone as you start working now inside the 30-yard line. Now the clock starts to move. you got to be ready to go. Well, tonight's piece of players of the game from the University of Miami is Michael Barrow on defense. And for him tonight, eight tackles, one interception. For Boston College, Tom McManus, what a night. 13 tackles, 12 solo. That is uh, BC's career tackle leader. As a part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. When you blitz, you take a chance on that man coverage. If you don't get to Glenn Foley, you've got those outside receivers hand to man. You have a chance for a big play. Shotgun formation. Here they come. Looking for the end zone and oh, incomplete. Michael Campbell is who they wanted. And Herbert James was bumping with him the entire way. That's what you're going to get in this situation, Ron, because I believe Miami's just going to keep coming after Glenn Foley. You want to try to disrupt the patterns and make him throw fades in the corner. 36 seconds left. It is third down. Barrow, but he cannot get away from number fifth, uh, 86, Kevin Patrick. And he'll be sacked back at the 40-yard line. That's the one thing you can't have happen in that situation. Now on fourth down, you just got to pitch it on down the field. Big sack by Kevin Patrick, 86. Time management right now of the essence for BC. And a flag comes down. Half 
to go to the Hail Mary right now. You've only got nine seconds left. You have to line your zero. Now it's throw the end zone time, Ron. Ten penalties, 102 yards against Boston College. And it comes down to this. 19-14. Miami leads. Foley's going to do just that. He's putting it up. And nobody there. And with that, the clock runs out. There is a penalty on the play. I think it's on Boston College. Which would mean the game's over. Good number 13, you had outstanding football games tonight. The visiting on the field. Penalty is against Boston College, so this one is now over. And Mike, 19 to 14. Boston College was an underdog by anywhere from 24 to 26 points in this one tonight. And let's go now to Adrian Carson, who is with uh, Coach Erickson. Coach, take a deep breath. First of all, congratulations on your victory. You win the game by five points. Are you concerned what would happen to you with the polls and what the reaction is there? The polls, I'm just, we won the game. That's all that matters. We came off an emotional one, and uh, Boston College, you got to give them credit. They've played great. What gave it uh, the most problem for you guys tonight? Their game plan, the way they kept coming at you with different looks all the time? That and emotion. Uh, they were they, uh, You can look at the stands and all that. They had great emotion, and uh, they played great. We we're lucky to win, but we're still undefeated. So. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Ron? All right, thanks, Adrian. Once again, the final score, Miami 19 and Boston College 14. Be sure and stay tuned for the college football scoreboard, which follows next. And now for Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten, I'm Ron Franklin saying good night from Boston, Massachusetts.